Guys, you have one more day to get this merch and then it's one gone more. forever. One, one more, more day. Guys, that's right. Do you want some official Trash Taste merch? T-shirts, long sleeves, hoodies, button-up jackets? You only have 24 hours to pre-order it before it's gone forever. Hours. Trashtaste.shop, links in the description. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. You heard the warning, do it right now. Click that link in the description. Do it. People who watch football are almost like professional watchers of, of sports. <laughs> What what are you what are you talking like, about? Like who, professional reaction <laughs> channels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people who people who go to watch League of Legends are not really stadium goers. Welcome back to another episode of Trash Taste. Uh, I'm joined once again by the boys, Joey and Gunn. Hello. Welcome to episode 180. 180. That's scary to say. So close to 200 now. Oh. Yes. This but, is a topical episode. We're coming yep. to you fresh. From Fresh, the trash well, me and Connor just came back from Korea. Yeah, how was and it, We uh, wanted to talk about it, Yeah, I guess. please. What do you think, was your Connor? first time, What, what right? do you think, Connor? It was your first time, yeah. so. Uh, it was cool. It was swag. <laughs> and that's the end of Trash Taste, guys. Thanks for fucking <laughs> no, it, was, it, was, uh, it was nice. Uh, a lot of things I liked, some things I didn't like as much, you know. Well, uh, let's, yeah. let's run through it. What did you like? What did you not okay, like? Okay, okay. I, I, oh, okay. Oh, I got to oh, get, oh, get oh, this. Oh, he's going to tell me. I got to come out. All right, it's trash test. I've got to come out swinging because I was, I think I've mentioned this take before and yeah. now I've been to Korea and other times, mm. uh, like more times now. I genuinely believe that Korean barbecue is better in the States. Mm, yeah, Ooh. I agree. Yeah, like I, agree. I, I have gone to three different Korean barbecue places in Korea now okay. and they've, I've always not so much been disappointed, but more so I've gone to them and I'm like, this is good. But I felt but like my experience, I, I was like, I know what peak is and peak is like Korean barbecue in LA. And I think I also agree with you on that. Like, it's not to say that Korean barbecue is bad necessarily, it's yeah. fantastic. But like, <clears throat> I don't know what it is. Is it the cuts of the meat? Is it the way they cook it? Is it the marinade? I don't know what it is, but there's just something about the meat they use in American Korean barbecue. That yeah. is just, it just, is more pleasing to my palate. <laughs> and I don't know why. I, I like all you can eat. I am I like all you can eat. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. In, in Korea, a lot of them were not all you can eat. Sure. Yeah, sure. I mean, there, there, were, there are a lot of all you can eat uh, Korean barbecues in Korea, mm. but I feel like, I don't know, sometimes like the vibe is different because you get, it, it almost, felt like every Korean barbecue place I went to, there was less choice of like the different cuts. Yeah, there's like three get. cuts in yeah. this one place I went to. That was it, it was like pork. Really? There was only three, yeah. yeah. They oh. specialized in like those cuts and it was uh, fine. Yeah. It was pretty good. Uh. Yeah, what, what the thing I see in Korean barbecues in Korea is it very much more, is more reminiscent of like the yaki, uh, yaki niku kind of experience mm. where you have these like very specialized cuts. Yeah, it's kind of, I would almost say Korean barbecue in Korea is kind of like the in-between of Japanese yaki niku and like American and Korean barbecue, if that makes Kinda, sense. Yeah. yeah. Like there's elements to yakiniku where it's like the meat cuts are more specialized as mm. you said, Yeah, but it also is, I guess a lot more, I don't want to say flavorful, like American <laughs> Korean barbecue, but like, what, what's the word? Like, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's when you eat yakiniku, it's heavy for sure, because yeah. you're eating a shitload of meat, but like, it doesn't nah. leave you with that feeling of like, <laughs> oh God, kind of deal, you know? No, nah, I'd win. Huh? <laughs> nah, I'd, win. I'd, I'd win every time. Nah, I'd win. I, I don't get that feeling when I when I have the meats. Yeah. No, meat makes you feel light. It's like stop. what? When I eat a shit ton of meat, I feel good. What do you mean? Wait, wait, wait. Is this a, like Did, controversial taste? Yes. Yes. I yep. feel way worse if I have like a ramen. Well, yeah, because you eat. <laughs> That's like starch and uh, salt. Yeah, and well, food. obviously, but like, how do you not feel like? Like it's not so much like, okay. Cause like when you eat ramen, it's the kind of like feeling of full where it's mm. you're bloated, right? Obviously yeah, because yeah. You, you've had a lot of starch, you've had a lot of carbs and then you, you know, and then the noodles obviously expand in your stomach when you have, you know, mm. the ramen like broth and yeah. like water yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. But with meat, it's just, it's a lot. Yeah, it is. <laughs> no, it's a like, lot of food. Like nah, it, you, I've never been to a Korean barbecue in America at least. Yeah. And I haven't like, especially if it's all you can eat and you get to a point where, you know, okay, here's, here's the big explode. question. Here's, yeah, here's there's, the big there's, question. There's do different... you order rice? You go to an all you can eat place. Uh, you can order as much meat as you can. Do you order rice? I try to stay away from it. Yeah. I try to only meet the system. Yeah. So right. normally I normally I try to get a little bit of rice, but most of the time when I go to an all you can eat Korean barbecue place, I eat only meat. Dude, I eat a fuckload of yeah. rice. And you get Why? to that point. Because it works well with the rice. Oh. <laughs> 
That's the whole point. How they get you. No, no, that's okay. That's like going to like hey, a- Hey, call me Nihonjin. I like my rice, Look, okay? That's, that's, that's like going to a buffet and yeah. having the pizza crust when you have like all you can eat pizza. That's just like yeah, wasted space. I'm gonna it's eat- wasted no, no, space. No, 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 no. I don't agree with that. First of all, okay, okay. I eat the crust because I'm not a fucking child. No, okay. I, especially in an all you can eat this buffet, feels, feels crust like is <laughs> just trust. empty. Like crust is just wasted. Stomach space. Okay, I swear we, okay, to God. We're not, we're not going to entertain your baby opinion on that. Let's, okay. let's stay on topic. Right? Okay, staying on topic. Yeah. You eat enough meat, and I remember like you just get like the meat sweats. Do you, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys know yeah. what I'm talking I, about? I, I get like, I get a little bit of that, but I, I don't get it that bad. And I kind of like that. You like the meat sweats? I like me sweating when I eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> it's satisfying. Do you, did you have to okay. say it like that? Yes. <laughs> Yes, I did. I like sweating when I eat meat. I like sweat when I'm gobbling down meat. Because I I always enjoy the feeling of just eating a shit ton of meat, but yeah. I always regret it the moment no, I, I walk outside. It. Why do you regret it? Because it's just a lot of fucking meat. Yeah, but that's- It's that's, just a lot, man. Oh, that's not a regret. And, and then, I, and I then when it. the sweat start kicking in, you're just like, oh God, what I have I done? I only regret that I had weakness and I, and I had to stop. <laughs> I wanted to keep going. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm serious. It's just I'm, really funny imagining you step out of a Korean barbecue, yeah. sweating your nuts off and you're like, damn, that feels good. I yeah. know, I like, I like it. Cause that means I ate a good amount of meat. <laughs> you, know, you, you don't like that? No, I, okay. I don't, I don't I, say I, I don't like it. Obviously I, I love eating meat, pause. But I don't <laughs> like the feeling that you get after you've had after like you a shitload of meat. Yeah, you know, like, like uh, there's there's a there's a good amount of meat you can have where you feel mm -hmm. satisfied yeah. and <laughs> you don't get the sweats. You know. Yeah. But when you go to a Korean barbecue or even a yakiniku, mm -hmm. I never not have that because the option to have as much meat as you possibly can is more satisfying. Okay, I don't know if this is the thing. When I go to Yakiniku, mm. even if it's like all you can order or yeah. you can eat, I all always- you can order. I mean, that's, <laughs> if you can say it, you can have it. Well, that's, that's, that's 20 <laughs> plates, I'm not gonna eat any of them. <laughs> or it, that's, that's how I think about it because I don't know why. I always come out of Yakiniku and I feel mm. like I've eaten like, I, I get like reasonably full, even if, even if it's all you can eat. Really? For some reason, when I go to Korean barbecue, I always fucking stuff myself to the limits. Yeah. Yeah, and as you should. I think yeah. that's just a personal taste issue though. I don't know it? why I think, I think you just prefer Korean barbecue over yakiniku. Yeah, I mean, so I, I do, I do. Also in Japan, when you when you get a yakiniku, a mm. lot of the times the portions are quite small. Yeah. So even when you're ordering a lot of meat, mm. it's normally quite small. So it's really hard to actually just get through it because they're bringing it quite slowly. Right. Yeah. The odds are you're eating it way faster than they're bringing it out. Yeah, sure. I, I, I think that's the big thing I like about America as well. When you, when you order a portion of meat, they give you, oh, they, they slap sometimes. down an entire fucking massive it's plate of that It's too much sometimes meat. though. And I just feel bad for wasting it. Cause I look at this like <laughs> leftover pile of <laughs> no, meat. No, you, I'm sweating, just yeah. dripping down. That's, and that's I'm like- That's where the meat sweats come Shit, I have to eat that. Like, some places in America do this though. They charge you if you don't eat uh, some, some of the meat. Yeah. yeah. You do that thing where you kind of put it all, put it on the grill. You're like, ah, maybe it'll like disintegrate in the corner. <laughs> And you're like, ah. It's like if I char it down enough, yeah. And if I, I shove just it down, put it on this thing. No, no, that's the strat when uh, that's not with like Korean barbecue, but hot yeah. pot. That's like if just you go let to it an, melt into the if broth. you can all if you go to an all you can eat yeah, hot pot, you're you like shit. It. How do we get rid of all of the shit that we ordered? Uh, I mean, meat kind of like- Crank the heat up. <laughs> meat shrinks if you leave it, it in water shrink. for it long enough, shrink. right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, much. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we obviously said it at the beginning of the episode, but hey, we got much. Oh, we said it at the beginning. Yeah, we said it at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, oh, we, we did that shit, sorry. I mean, yeah, yeah, we said it, but we can shout it out again. Check it yeah, out, I mean, great much. I, I could eat a lot of meat in this and yes. be comfortable. <laughs> yeah. it, is it is stretchy, it is this stretchy. Is yeah. Insane quality, you went crazy. Yeah, I wanted to thank uh, Joey for this one because he handled this merch drop. Yeah, this is crazy. Right. Yeah. Available for limited time, as we mentioned, link in the Dude, description. Yeah. It's so comfy. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> well, you can finally about, see Connor wearing meat something else. Sweats now. <laughs> you, yeah. get, you get a meat sweats just thinking just about thinking it. About yeah. It. <laughs> but I also, I also think another thing about Korean barbecue that I enjoy in America as well mm. um, is, I don't know if this is just the barbecue places that I went to in Korea as well, but I feel like they have different like bulgogis and galbis that they give you as well. Mm. There's just so much more different choices, not only of the cuts. One day I'll figure out what bulgogi is. <sighs> isn't it just yeah, mar isn't it's it just the name of a marinade? I don't know. I don't know. It's sorry, sorry, sorry carry on was, interrupt yeah. you. Guys. Yeah, yeah. There's just there's just every kind of combination of all the sauces and all the cuts that you can think of in America. Mm. And in, in Korea, it's just very 
at least from my experience, very, very much more limited. Maybe it was just the places I went to, but it was three different places I we, went we to We also now. had fried chicken one night and it was pretty bad. I think- We went to a what? bad place. Yeah, I think that was yeah. just the place that we went to. So me and Sydney actually walked past that place and <laughs> I didn't notice this. So we stayed in uh, Hongdae, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Uh, it was like very- Very touristy. Uh, very yeah, touristy. So mm. I think we just went to a tourist trap because- oh, we, definitely. we definitely did. 100%. Yeah, yeah, because I, I had uh, fried chicken with Sydney like afterwards is why I stayed for a few more days and it fucking slapped. It was, oh, really? it was great. Yeah. Um, but I, w I Danny walked- shafted. I did. I walked past the place that me and Connor went to yeah. and I saw it um, because we ate here on the very first day. We mm. literally just landed. We were just like, let's go to a chicken place. Found the first chicken place. Sure. It was like the <laughs> only place that could fit like a, a big group. Right, right. Yeah. And I saw they had a sign and I didn't, and now I know this is a guaranteed tourist trap, right? Cause I, I saw it had a sign and it said, Gordon Ramsay recommends this chicken place. <laughs> and I was just like, no. ain't no fucking way Gordon Ramsay actually recommends this particular chicken Damn. place, man. And, uh, <laughs> Look, Emily accidentally ordered like five times the amount of chicken we needed. Why does she do this every time? So literally they, it was like, it was like a, the, a meme. It just yeah. kept coming out. We we had like- And it wasn't even that good. We, yeah, yeah, we had like, we had like tw like 30 pieces of chicken left over. Yeah. And I was like, Emily, why did you order this much? She's like, why didn't they tell me this was too much? I was like, oh my God. I feel like the onus is on you here, Emily, not them. Yeah, yeah it was great because, uh, you know, the only person who could speak just a little bit of Korean was Emily. Yeah. So we kind of just left everything to her. Yeah, how is it the one person that can speak the language fucks up the order? <laughs> well, she was over, over well, ambitious. She, yeah. she overestimated because she was expecting Japanese portions. Uh, uh, but we huge. soon found out that Japanese portions and Korean portions very are different. very, very, very different. Never change Emily. Um, and then we, you know, we had like, 30 more pieces of chicken than we could possibly eat. Yeah. And then we were we went to a craft beer place afterwards and Bye. we were just like, let's order a pizza as well, because we're on holiday. Did you get the meat sweats? Uh, we got the pizza sweats oh, afterwards. The pizza sweats. We were like, oh, okay, 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 Emily, Emily, we would like to order the small size of the pizza. Yeah. And like a fucking <laughs> meme, <laughs> somehow something got lost in translation and they brought out the biggest size of the pizza. 18 that. inch, it was an 18 inch. <laughs> And I was like, Emily, come on, what the fuck? Uh, when, when do you realize that you sh she might purposely be doing this maybe <laughs> just to fuck with you guys? Uh, so yeah, that was, that was, that was kind of just like a, what the fuck day one food was kind of mid. So it was yeah. like, all right, well, hopefully be better. And it was right, better. Yeah. The rest of the food that we had was, that's was good. good. That's yeah. good. Although I, pff, Korean hot dogs, worst, worst hot dog experience in my Why life. Why would you go to Korea to have a hot dog? Well, because we were in the stadium watching League of Legends. Okay. And I thought that a must that I do, I, and I, I like to do this everywhere. I like to get a hot dog everywhere I go. Okay. Cause mm -hmm. I want to, you know, it's a, it's a staple everywhere you go in the world. I thought that's your benchmark for food. Everywhere, yeah. cause, cause you know, it, it's just interesting that every, I'm so sorry, Koreans. every <laughs> single country has a different like take on it. Sure. And so I wanted to try it. And uh, it looked like a uh, ketchup and mustard on the sign. Okay. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll take one of those. Uh, and it handed it to me and the sweet corn on it. Oh, okay. Just sweet corn. And like, and then it was like ketchup, but if ketchup was four times sweeter, right? Uh, and some other weird relish. And then I, I look at the meat, and it's just like white. <laughs> and I was like, "What the fuck? Why is my hot dog white?" Yeah. Uh, and I can confirm, looking at the picture, it was meant to look like a normal hot dog. Sure. I bite into it. Worst hot dog in my life. It was terrible. It like flaked apart. It was brittle. Yeah. It, it I'm, fell I'm, apart like like uh, cement. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna put sweet that corn. on you. Yeah. Why is it on me? I'm gonna put that on I you. I got a hot dog Connor. from a stadium because you because were you got probably, a hot dog from a stadium. Yeah, Connor. Because you were probably and in a I country not, that doesn't specialize in hot yeah. dogs. Okay, first of all, I, it doesn't matter if the country specializes in hot dogs, right? I every stadium sells hot dogs, and I like testing each stadium's hot dogs. Okay, uh, and some countries do it good. UK does not do it good. Have you no. had Japanese stadium hot dogs before? Uh, no, I, I still haven't. They actually, suck. I've, I've never been to a. a Japanese stadium. They suck. Uh, I will bother. be the judge of that. Don't I'll even bother, they suck. Can't be worse than Korea. Fucking brittle ass hot dog. Sweet corn. Wait, Sweet corn wait, on a what? hot dog? Okay, yeah, in that, what year? To be fair, that is whack. But that's, like, what? That's wild. What was, what was the rest of the stadium menu like? It was like uh, fried chicken. Well, it was, yeah, it was great. It was, yeah, which I, is like what you should I, get. I, 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 I didn't want fried chicken. 
At the fried chicken, I had like, they have uh, the Korean like street food, which like they peel the whole potato and it's put it on dumb. a stick. I hate, I hate that. Oh, the, the, I, I, the spiral potatoes. The spiral right? potatoes. Yeah, those are good. Tornado potatoes. Yeah, they're good. No, it's fucking dumb. I don't no, like, like, why is it dumb? Give me French fries. You know what's why dumb? You, what the fuck? Why no. do I have to get this comically large stick? You, no, you know what's <laughs> dumb? <laughs> Buying a hot dog <laughs> in yeah, Korea. That's, that's, that's way dumb. fucking dumb. No, I draw the line because they put fucking sugar on everything in Korea as well. Yeah, and they're probably going to do it on the hot dog, which they did. they did. And also on the fucking potato, which is French fries, yeah. they put sugar on it. Yeah. Why? Because they do that everywhere. I want salt on Did it. you go to, a, have you been to a Korean bakery before? No, but I presume they just put sugar Dude, on it. Dude, it is like eating sugar if it wasn't in carb form. I it got, is uh, so incredibly sweet. Also, I got Pringles one day. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted a snack. Oh, oh yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about all the Korean listen, things I did listen, in, in Korea. Listen, Pringles. Listen, listen, I had Pringles one day, right? The Korean staple. I was craving, I was craving some God damn Damn, real crisps, right? I wanted some fucking salty ass crisps. Yeah. Because everything was fucking sweet in Korea. Yeah. And I was getting fucking sick of it. So I go, I go to the fucking Pringles. I, 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 I'm pleading to like the fucking Monopoly man, or whoever it is on the front, the Pringle man. The, Pringles man. the guy with the mustache. I'm like, please, I beg of thee, give me something salty. I need to have some salt in my veins. And I say, I look at the options. I have like sour cream and onion. Uh, there's cheese and something else. And then there's, there's a hot, very hot, it says. Okay. So I get the spicy one. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, fuck it. It's gonna be spicy. Yeah. I fucking, I open it up and I, I look at it. It's like, it's like pink. I was like, hey, that's weird. Oh yeah. I eat it. It's just fucking sweet. <laughs> it's not spicy at all. You had one, right? Yeah. It was just sweet. I was so pissed off. How did they do that? It was, it was black. The, 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 the universal, Ex explanation for spicy things is black packaging. Also, in a country like Korea, where there's a lot of fucking yeah, spicy they, they food, you expect spicy it food. to be black, spicy. Yeah. Black and red packaging. Yeah. They had jalapenos on it, peppers yeah. cut in half. Yeah. This was supposed to be it. This was supposed to be spicy, it's supposed to be salty. I bite into it. It's like a light jalapeno that's been drenched in sugar. Can you, can you look up the packaging? Korea? I want to see this packaging. Yeah, can you, can you type in uh, Korean Pringles hot flavor or something? Maybe, it, maybe it, hot it, in Korean means like sweet. Uh, <laughs> No, no, no. Um, I mean, it's that flavor, right? Um, but it, it is, it is that exact flavor, you know, because I've seen that flavor before in Pringles. Uh, yeah, I, th I think it is that flavor. Which one? No, it's the black one. The black yeah, one. It's like hot and spicy. Oh, hot yeah, and spicy. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I was like, oh, thank God, I get to finally have a fucking kick, and it's fucking sweet. <laughs> So I was, I was getting, that was the one thing that was pissing me off about Korea actually. Well, Everything was sweet. I had miso soup one day. I was like, great. <laughs> That's how you know you're really clutching at straws in Korea. Uh, <laughs> to get some salt in your no, body. No, no, no. I, I had, I had, uh, I, I ordered a bibimbap. My boy hasn't had a single Korean meal in Korea. No, no, I went to a bibimbap restaurant, right? It was fucking godlike. Yeah. It, was, yeah. it was amazing. Yeah. It was it doesn't so, mean yeah. in Korea. Yeah. so, so good. It was literally this small shop run by one dude. Yeah. He yeah. was doing everything. That's clean. the best yeah. ones. Uh, and I had to wait like 10 minutes to get in, but it was fucking amazing. It was mm. so worth it. And it was really like, it was just amazing. But. On the side, he brought miso soup with it. Okay. And I was like, great. I get to have something salty. Sure. I pick it up. I have a sip. It's sweet. <laughs> I, I think they put- Are you serious? Yeah. I think they put sugar or something in the miso soup. It was sweet. Okay. That as a Japanese person, I am definitely a fan. Thank and you I, this Thank is where you. I literally, I, 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 I sipped it and I went- <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> like, wow. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, this is oat milk. This is- <laughs> I, I just took Wait. a sip. Don't it's worry. Okay. It's okay. Oh shit. Oh no. no oh no. God. Oh Jesus. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I spilled okay, everywhere. Oh my I'm so God. Sorry. I'm, so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Connor. I'll take one as well. Okay. So yeah, I, I was I was just getting, that was the only thing that was kind of annoying me about Korea is that- You just I, weren't getting a dub with the food. No, no, I, I had I had great food in Korea generally. Yeah. Uh, Bibimbap was definitely the highlight. That, but then when you yeah. try to redeem yourself with the previous meal, you just got worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then I, like- I feel like the best meals I had in Korea was the stuff that you was is harder to get uh, like outside of Korea. Sure. Like uh, Korean barbecue is everywhere, mm, you know, um, fried chicken, fried everywhere. chicken everywhere as well, uh, which there were plenty of good fried chicken places in Korea, sure. but it's very much a case of, hey, if you go to the popular touristy places, it's still, mm. you know, just because it's fried chicken, just mm. because it's Korean barbecue, doesn't mean the quality is gonna suddenly increase just because you're in Korea. Did you, you have know? any of like the street food? Yeah, we I, did. Uh, we had a street food day. Yeah, yeah, we had a street uh, food it, day. It was pretty good, but, it felt like, cause all of the stalls were like the same. Yeah. They were literally all like just copy paste stalls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just kind of felt like it was like, I don't know, that it wasn't like, what's the, what's the word? 
you kind of hope it's just like one dude who's like, I just make a sick fucking noodles. Mm. But it was more like there's an Oreo truck and there's 15 of them. And then there's the same truck that sells the exact same meat and it's all the same. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It kind of felt like a little more corporate. Yeah. I think it was kind of like, it, it, it wasn't, there was, there was some individual stalls mm. and there was one that did like some black bean noodles that were pretty good. Yeah. And that was really nice. I think, I think from, from my experience of going to like a lot of like street food stuff in Korea, like the, the biggest like selling point of it is not necessarily like this store specializes in this or this mm. store specializes mm. in this. It's like, you just pick a place that you can kind of vibe with the owner of that store with. Yeah. And just yeah. kind of like sit down and just chill with the dude while having a nice meal. Yeah. I think that's like the biggest thing. It's not oh, like the, Japan where it's like, if you want the takoyaki, you got to go to this place. If you want the fucking okonomiyaki, you got to go to this place. It's like just, I think like, you know, cause unlike Japan, uh, I feel Koreans in general are a lot more just like open to like stranger friendliness. Yeah, yeah. Like to- Yeah, yeah Korean people were so, so fucking cool. Yeah, it's, that's so it's, friendly. Especially on this trip, I definitely noticed, started noticing the difference more between Japanese culture and Korean culture. Totally. Uh, that's, I, I don't know how I didn't notice this the first time, but holy fuck, drivers are crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, bro, they they, they are insane. I, I'd forgotten because I thought Japanese I taxi it. drivers were sometimes you, you'd find an insane taxi driver in sure. Japan. I was like the worst, the most insane taxi driver in Japan is the most sane taxi driver oh, in yeah. Korea. Every single taxi is like this. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I, I, I've been complaining a lot about this, the sweetness of the food, but it was really, really fun. And I, I, I really like Korea a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely want to go back. And I, I got that feeling again of being completely useless in a country. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't speak any Korean. Mm. And I was like, oh shit. Dude, Back do you know what was again. the most annoying part? Because I didn't know any Korean, I always defaulted to Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like fucking muscle memory. Yeah. I kept saying hi and yeah. daijabu to everything. Yeah. Even though I was just like, wait, shit. I'm yeah, uh, yeah I, I would say hi a lot. Yeah. I had to catch myself, ah, fuck. Yeah. But Season Asian immediately yeah, yeah, says yeah, hi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, shit, am I being racist right now? I'm like, I swear to God, I swear, I'm, I, I'm not mistaking you for Japanese. I This is just muscle memory yeah. right now that yeah. I, that's going on. I, I felt like bad that I, I couldn't speak much Korean. Mm. Yeah. So I was like, man, I feel like I should, I should be better. But also it's like, ah, it's, I was only there for a weekend. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were only there for a weekend and I like, I. I you know, I, I learned the word for yes, and that was pretty much it. <laughs> thank you, Gun Sunday Dog. Gun Sunday Dog. I just that button. I was yeah. like, bum, 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 thank you, thank you. <laughs> just need a soundboard. Gun Sunday Dog, Gun Sunday Dog. No bidets, massive L. Um, I, really? Like, really? Except in our hotel, we had bidet. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. it was like 50 50 for me. Oh, really? Some, some bars had bidets. No way. Uh, and some bars didn't. They're, they're getting it. They're getting there slowly. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. I, I prefer some bidets to no bidets. So. Yeah, I think if I, I definitely want to go back maybe like next year, cause it's just so goddamn close, like a two hour flight. One, yeah. one thing that caught me off guard, mm. and this is cause I've just been in Japan too long, is that people would just randomly spit oh. occasionally. <laughs> yeah. And like, obviously people spit in Japan, but you, you just don't see it at all. Mm. Um, so <laughs> yeah, could you imagine? Fun fact, nobody spits in Japan. <laughs> no. uh, um, yeah, it was just really weird. It was super jarring. Cause you're like, you know, you Japan and Korea, they, they, they have a lot of, similar uh, vibes at times. Mm -hmm. And then the dude just goes, and you're like, oh, wow, okay, wow. Yeah, this is different. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> they have a lot of yeah. similarities to Japan, but then you also forget Korea is right next to China. Yeah. So yeah, they take yeah. a lot of their like cultural, like I guess uniquenesses from China as well. Cause like, I, I, I mean, I've never been to China, but I've heard from, people who live in China and friends from China that like- oh, I've been to China. A lot of people like just spit in the streets. Oh, it's, China, it's next right? level. Like if you go on public transport there, yeah. uh, at least like when I went to China, which was quite a long time ago now, yeah. uh, but they, you know, you go on a bus or you go on a plane or something and people will literally have spit bags. Yeah, I've seen these. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just a bit like, too much of a level for me to be like comfortable yeah. with, but yeah, you the know. Koreans are like, that's a little too much. We'll just do it on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but like, uh, it was really nice. They had a lot of cool craft beer places. That's what I normally go to when I'm yeah. Chilling. Like to me, I think like okay, comparing like Japan to Korea, I think Japan uh, as a whole, the quality of like food is like you know higher in Japan, mm. in my opinion, in my personal opinion. Mm. If you go to a random restaurant, it's probably gonna be always slaps, you mm -hmm. know? If you go to Korea, you there are plenty of amazing fucking restaurants there, but there can be some mid places as well that you stumble into. Sure, um, sure. But drinking and the drinking culture in Korea, I think is way more fun and- Oh, it's next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's what Korea has the advantage yeah. of. I wonder if there, because this is something I struggled with when I was there and I was thinking, I'm like, man, I, 
I know where to go in Japan to get all the, the things I like mm. and all the good food and I and I know what to look for. Mm-hmm. And I, I it was kind of like starting from zero where I was like, I don't know what to look for. And I'm sure that I would probably say the opposite if I'd lived in Korea for a long time and came to Japan. I'd be like, yeah, but I think Korea is more consistent because Japan, you can have some really shit food. Um, you there's can. A, there's a lot of, you know, if you go to- uh, I wouldn't necessarily say shit, but like definitely underwhelming. You can get, yeah, you, if you could just go to really bad izakayas a lot, you can yeah. get some really like pretty, pretty awful food. And I feel like, it, I don't know, I, I feel like it's hard for me to properly figure out h- how it would be and uh, judge the two. I don't know, because I remember when I visited Japan, just before we moved here, I like every meal I, f- I thought was fucking terrible oh, really? and banger. But yeah. was that because, I, I, was yeah. that because your perspective of Japan at the time was kind of like, oh, there's no place in Japan that can miss. Yeah, I'm you might have. Of, you you might have had. had you might have been looking at the country and the culture through these rose tinted glasses and being like, "Oh well, I mean, people will say this is mid, but I think it's fantastic," kind of thing. Because you know? you, you, there's you, a lot of people who do that. Okay, you know, you know how you know how I know. You know how I know. Uh, this is this is the real test. Sure. You do the combini test. All right. <laughs> Japan combini solos Korean combinies like. Easy. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's that easy. That is easy. True. You know. Yeah. And you know, I, I feel like for the most basic. Food, you, I, I feel like you know basic comedy food. I feel mm. like some of that quality translates into the restaurants that you get as well. Sure. I, I'm trying to look at this as unbiased as I can, but I, you know, what, what do you want to say, Connor? No, 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 go ahead. I'll, I'm put my hand up to say I'll talk. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to look at this as unbiased as I can. But my memory for coming to visit Japan mm. was I was never disappointed. You know, even mm. if, if like the only thing that has changed is my perception of what the top tier food is in Japan. I right. actually liked food less when I was a tourist here. I, really? didn't, I didn't like food much when I was visiting here the first time. Really? Yeah, I I, I think it's because my diet was so fucking British that I think it was like, <laughs> it was it was a shock. To it's have, too oriental <laughs> for me. I, I think genu- genuinely, like, I, and I, like it's, it, it, it's fucking stupid, mm. but like, I, I can also now, it makes me kind of like sympathize a bit when people come to Japan and, and I appreciate that they're trying to eat the food, but I know they're not vibing with it. Yeah. Sure. Cause sometimes it just takes a little bit of what, like exposure to it. It takes a little while for you to get used to it. Yeah. Like I remember that I always, I always really, really wanted to like sushi. Mm. And I just, I just pretended every single well, time. Well, I remember you told us like, you know, when you were growing up in Wales, like rice was seen as like a, a luxury or like a delicacy. Right? Not, it wasn't, not a luxury, but more of like a, a kind of- Like a, oh, we're having rice. Yeah, it's like, yeah. A, oh yeah. wow, rice. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm a curry. <laughs> yeah. And if it, if, if it was, it wasn't for like Indian curry, I don't think I'd ever eat rice. <laughs> right. Um, it's just, just not in the like diet. Sure. But, I remember the first time I had sushi, I, I really, really, really wanted to like sushi. Cause mm-hmm. you know, I just felt like I, you know, I was kind of a, a weeb. I was like, yeah, I want to like, <laughs> I remember thinking, thinking I, I, would eat, I would eat all these cuts of sushi and I remember thinking like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> so the first few times I had it, I was like, man, I just don't really vibe with sushi. Mm. But then after living here, after like a year, I would just start getting these cravings for sushi. And I was like, oh, I guess I just, li- I fuck with this thing now. Right. Yeah. But I think that's just cause I've, Cause you're here. acclimatized to it now, right? Yeah, and I think yeah. My, my taste buds are slowly changing and I'm getting older, but also I'm getting more used to the food here. I think it just it just takes a while sometimes for you, you to like swap. Oh, totally. Yeah. There are some egregious cases where people are just, it pisses me off when no one tries. Like if you don't try yeah. to eat anything, yeah. but I can understand when people have kind of a hard time getting used to trying new foods. Yeah, totally. Uh, Cause it, it certainly I mean, there is a thing a called acquired taste. You yeah. Know? Like you have to get your body kind of used to this like new sensational just, taste or whatever it is. Right? Yeah, I just ate a lot of heavier foods. So I remember mm. when I was here the first week or so, I was like, man, I just want something that is fucking heavy. <laughs> I want something that yeah. gives me the sweats. Yeah, cause everything, <laughs> everything was very light. Yeah. And I was like, man, I just miss having that heavy feeling. Yeah. And yeah. now I'm kind of, I've swapped now. Yeah, I'm kind of in the, uh, the the Japan camp of food. Where I'm like, I actually don't want to feel heavy most of the time. Right. Yeah, but it's just weird how my how that changes, and I, I guess it's just something we don't consider when mm. we're talking about foods because no, we're yeah. always at each other's throats <laughs> about crusts and whatnot. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, I, I think one of the re- big reasons I really like you know Korean food in general, mm. and one of the things that I got when I in this Korea trip compared to Japanese food is that they know how to do spicy food. And oh, some, yeah. some of my favorite meals when on this trip was when some spice was involved because- Yeah, my God, blood cheeks were hurting. Holy mm. shit. I had uh, like, I, I remember we, when me and Sydney went to this place, I think it was like a duck galbi place mm. uh, oh. where they ba- basically awful for your diet probably, just like spicy chicken. And then you had like a bunch of cheese, melted cheese on the side. Ooh. 
And uh, you, you know, you have the chicken and then you can like plop it on the cheese and it's like fucking godlike. Yeah. It was in like a cast iron like skillet as well. That's the shit that gets that, you the And that's sweats. how you know. And that's that's where that's, you get the meat and the cheese sweats from that. And then after you eat enough the chicken, they pour like some fried rice on it. And then they put like, put a bunch yeah. of spicy yeah. sauce. So good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then they kind of like fry the rice on the skillet and then they put a bunch of cheese on the rice, put the rice on the cheese so that you just, put a spoonful in and you get like some spicy rice, fried rice, chicken and cheese. It's like a ricey lasagna. And oh my God, uh, I was not I was on the toilet for a full day, <laughs> but it was so worth it. Yeah. <laughs> it was so goddamn There's some banger it. cheese duck albi places in Japan oh, as well. Yeah, like yeah. in, or, in, um, in Oku- Shinokubo, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, also another thing that Korea has, has figured out and I have no idea why this hasn't caught on. In the, in the stadium, right? When you wanted the beer, you didn't get it in like an open, uh, plastic cup. Mm. You got a one liter like s- uh, soda bottle oh. filled with beer. Oh. Yeah. And then the woman goes, how many cups do you want? I was like, oh shit. I mean, uh, I'll get like four. <laughs> yeah. And so we could all just pour each other beers and oh. then just close the lid. That's super smart. I was yeah. like, wait, this is genius. Why have we not, why is the rest of the world not doing this? Maybe because yeah. it creates more waste. Uh, possibly, yeah. but I don't think waste is a concern of stadiums. Mm. I think <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like Maybe they just sell more beer if it's a no. If they everyone has to drink that, I don't know. Or maybe yeah. it's because like you know because uh, Korea is such a heavy drinking culture, right? Like oh, they, they probably drink. just think to themselves like, oh, one cup is not going to be enough. If yeah. I'm going to carry like four cups to myself, I'd rather just get a full liter bottle, right? Well, it's nice because we all didn't have to like go and carry drinks. Yeah, like, one yeah. of us could just go get like two bottles, and we could all just share. The, yeah, yeah, share yeah, the yeah. That's probably what it yeah, is. Yeah, I mean that was I, I guess to avoid we, the queues probably. This episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Guys, I'm struggling. What's wrong? It's the, that time of the year again, it's Christmas, and I don't know what to get my loved one for Christmas. Oh shit, I get it, man. I oh. totally get it. I know exactly what you can get people for Christmas. What? <gasps> ExpressVPN. Oh my God. That's right, ExpressVPN is an app that lets you change your online location. This lets you trick websites like Netflix, for example, into giving you a whole new library of content. Because if you didn't know, Netflix has different shows in every single country. So for example, the whole week we've been using ExpressVPN to to binge The Office on UK Netflix because it's not really available in Japan and I want some of that nostalgia, you feel me? It's so simple to do. I just fire up ExpressVPN app on my computer or mm. TV, change my location to the UK at Refresh Netflix and that's it. It's that simple? It lets you choose from almost 100 different what? countries. So imagine all of the Netflix libraries you can get throughout the world. But gentlemen, it's not just Netflix. Not just Netflix. ExpressVPN helps you access more content on all streaming services. Oh oh. Disney Plus, BBC iPlayer, YouTube, you name it, they can it's do it. too much. And on top of that, ExpressVPN is so goddamn fast. It is. It's so fast, there's never any buffering or lag, and it streams all the shows I like in HD. So if you're sick of all the cheesy shows on Netflix this holiday season, gift yourself a brand new library of content. Go to expressvpn.com slash trash taste right now, and you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Three months? Easy. Three months. That's expressvpn.com slash trash taste, expressvpn.com slash Trash taste to learn more. Oh yeah, we went to watch League of Legends. That yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I, I, I guess we didn't uh, say that, but we went to watch uh, the World Championship uh, for League of Legends, right, which right, right. we were planning this oh, trip. First one, the first, the first one. one. Yeah, the first. Oh, yeah, okay. that one. That one. That's that one. literally what it looks oh, like. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> it literally comes like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's smart. Smart. I don't know why more, more stadiums don't do that, but yeah, yeah, we went to Korea to watch the League of Legends World Final, uh, which we had been planning for a while, mm. and we actually tried to go as a little. Uh, we we tried to get normal tickets at first. Mm. Just couldn't get them. And uh, that's the reason, by the way, I wasn't in Korea. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. That's that's the reason Joey didn't go. It was yeah. me. Con- it was me, Connor, <laughs> uh, Didis, and Emily. So mm. we, were, we were all like League of Legends fans, and yep. uh, we all stayed up at the same time to get tickets for the World Finals mm. months ago. Mm. And then, within like 0.1 seconds, <laughs> they were gone. They were gone. Like you, 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 you. We had like we had like time this to the like, it's like almost like the millisecond. Supreme. Everyone's like, okay, press refresh now. And then it was like, Gone. you were in a queue of uh, 7,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were they were all gone. Damn. They were all gone uh, within like I don't know how you can't any, you can't keep up tickets. with those Korean interviews. So we, yeah. we had man. to we had to we had to use clout to get tickets. Yeah, uh, like this is the we first knew a guy, knew a guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is the first time that I've ever used 
kind of like my connections and my internet, which I hate doing. I I fucking hate doing. Can this, you get me League of T- Legend tickets? Do you know who I am? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> I, I fucking hate doing this, but this is the first time where if I did not, if I was like not in the position that I am in now, yeah. I do not know how I, I would get tickets. Right. Cause yeah, I tried. You, yeah, yeah, we I, tried. Yeah, we tried every avenue we could mm. because uh, we, you know, we didn't we didn't want to resort to this, but because we had no other choice. <laughs> I don't want to resort to this. I don't like, do, I, you uh, know, I, 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 I didn't like doing it to be honest. Uh, you just summoned I mean, my final form. Yeah. It depends on like how close I am with someone and like, you know, cause if they're like, a, you're good friends with them, you'd be like, hey man, yeah. can, I, can I get to use mm, you know, like, yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, for but if sure. But if you don't really know them, it's like, I don't want to have to like owe someone something. Yeah, I don't, yeah. don't want to have to use my clout to get it. Yeah, yeah. it also feels bad. So yeah, like, I get it. Yeah, but you, you know, there's nothing wrong with being like, hey, I'd like to go. Would yeah. you guys, mm-hmm. you guys, would you, how do you feel about that? Like, yeah. yeah. How, how do, do you, you feel about that? How does that make you feel? Yeah. Are you receptive to that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I, I put in my hours. I went on the official League of Legends uh, TikTok stream What right there. Oh yeah. yeah. Wait, what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'd, I'd met Raz through doing a jump, my Jump King event oh, yeah. where he was a commentator on it. And uh, I, I'd always, I was a huge fan of like League of Legends. So I, I knew him. Oh, like, I, well, you have to explain. I, I assume this guy's like a League of Legends commentator. He's a League of Legends like? commentator. Okay. Uh, and, and I always thought he, he was so fucking cool. Uh, and then when he was commentating on this event with me, I was super stoked. He was super, super nice. And uh, yeah. we ended up talking and then uh, I asked him for tickets to the New York thing. Yeah. And he managed to get me them. And mm. I was like, dude, thanks man, appreciate it. And then uh, I, I didn't ask him this time. We asked someone else. Uh, we got tickets and then he messaged me while I was there. He's like, do you want to come on the uh, on the stream? I was like, what stream? And then he was like, yeah, just come on over. So I, I go on over and I'm talking and sitting there and I'm having to talk with this other pro. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not a pro by the way. I'm just here to say things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was fun. It was nice. And I appreciate him, him you know, inviting me on it. Nice. It nice. Yeah, yeah. Talked in my hours. So, yeah. And, what uh, you worked on? And yeah, and I mean like the highlight of the event for me, unfortunately was probably just the opening act. Yeah, the opening act was the best part. <laughs> yeah. There was like fireworks and shit. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. I kind of sad that it was just 15 minutes. I kind of wish it was like 30. Yeah. It's, it kind of sounds like the Olympics. It, it is because like- The it, opening ceremony is the it's, best It's bit. kind of like the, uh, it's kind of like the risk you take with buying sporting events, right? right? Which is unfortunately like the two times I've been to a League of Legends world final, both Love. in Korea, uh, it's just been a complete stomp. Right. right, so and it just ends super quickly. Yeah, it just ends super quickly. Yeah. And one of those times, my the team I was supporting was the team that got stomped, which was just <laughs> like, like it was it was like double whammy of just like, oh, it was a stomp. Worst also, case scenario. my team just sucks, and yeah. uh, there was nothing to cheer for in this entire like three hour event that Damn. I was there for. But hey, the opening act was really fun. And, uh, yeah, because was- the game was too one sided oh, yeah. to the point where it, it just wasn't fun. Right. Yeah. Uh, there was literally n- like no, no tension. There was no tension. Uh, yeah. The, everyone was rooting for the team that was winning as well. Uh, yeah. So everyone was rooting, but even in the last game, everyone was kind of like stopped rooting as much. They <laughs> yeah. were like, "Yeah, it's kind of you already killed him." I think yeah. It's yeah. It was. It was. It was really fun though. I, I definitely want to go again. What did you think of the stadium experience? Like uh, the uh, it was kind of cool. like atmosphere. It was really cool. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of hard to watch uh, though, actually. Because you're like turning your head to like look at the big screen, but mm. and also because we were in Korea, I realized I was like, damn, I kind of miss hearing all the commentating in English and having right. their insight. Oh, because uh, all the commentating oh. was in Korean. It's yeah. all in Korean right. in the stadium. Yeah, right. so I'm just kind of having to watch it and make up my own thoughts, which is fine. But mm. I mean, I like she- it. sheep when they have no one to follow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, that's just like every, it was really cool though. Yeah, yeah, that's just every sporting event, right? Because yeah. you, I mean, you go to a football match and you're like, oh shit, I can't. Where, where are the commentators on the football match? Well, no. football, football. I felt like it is. I don't know. It's different. F- football energy is way different to that energy. I felt like I felt. You think mm. so? Yeah. I think well, so. okay. Well, I think there's just a different energy in terms of the place that you go to. Also the audience is very different. Yeah. The, in- the audience for league fans are not like fo- football <laughs> fans. The football fans will just start shouting, he's a fucking <laughs> he's a fucking <laughs> Then you're like, oh, I'll join in. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah, there are so many like weird fucking mm-hmm. football chants like, he's a pedo, he's yeah. a pedo. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's just like normalized. It's like, just, damn, you didn't have to go that hard. <laughs> <gasps> but and the, like, the whole like, you know, I remember distinctly that like, if they ever get close to the goal, everyone stands up and right, sits yeah. down and it has this really thunderous noise to it. It's mm. really, oh, great. really fucking, kind of fun. I fucking love football games, man. It's just a different, yeah. I feel like they're like, people who watch football are almost like professional watchers of, of sports. <laughs> 
<laughs> what what are you what are you talking like, about? <laughs> like I think people like who, professional reaction yeah, channels. Yeah. Like <laughs> people who people who go to watch League of Legends are not really stadium goers generally, right? They're not people who go to stadiums. They don't I've, like the other than for league. Yeah, other than yeah. for like one off events. Whereas people who go to watch football, they have season tickets, they go every week. Uh, you know, yeah. they are they are very, very yeah. in the it's, know of like stadium kind of vibe. It's sure. funny. And it it's, makes a different experience. It's funny because I remember when uh, I remember there was like some controversy, uh controversy on when League of Legends the world championship was set in America. Mm. And uh, what happened is one of the Korean teams was facing an American team. And when the Korean team went like was introduced, the American <laughs> audience booed them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they Most got American like, response. And they got so much flag for that. But like, I'm actually gonna defend the Americans. Because, nah, I like it. Because I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. Respect, oh, good play, respect all teams. But it's a fucking sporting event. Yeah. All right. No, I, yeah, I, you should be allowed to boo. You should be allowed to boo if you like. I, I can't imagine like this is like the tamest thing you could do in an English football match. Like, yeah, booing, <laughs> booing is like the least offensive thing that happens. Yeah, in yeah. English. In English football match or just football matches in Europe in general, we're going to fucking war. <laughs> it you know, makes, it makes, yeah. a pee. <laughs> <laughs> it makes, it makes, makes the worst shit ever. Yeah. I think it makes really compelling stories as well. Yeah, like having yeah. having someone be booed and then maybe yeah. they come out on top and yeah. then, you know maybe they win over the makes crowd. Makes underdog story. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, yeah. Like, there's there's de I, I think that you should be allowed to boo and cheer. But the one thing I, I that I hate the most about uh, being in kind of uh, more so that I've realized Asian kind of stadiums, I haven't been in Japan much, but when I've yeah. watched them, they they just make no noise for the team they don't care about. Yeah, which I, I think I feel that's like worse. Is almost <laughs> oh more offensive god. because like, oh my god. you know, in, in the stadium, right? T1, the Korean team, the most yeah. popular team in the world come yeah. out. It was Korea Erupt. versus it, yeah. it was Korea versus China. Right, right. This guy is hot. He's screaming at his lungs as a commentator. He's introducing the Chinese team. He's like, and we have China. And then er quiet. No one <laughs> makes fucking noise. And I feel like that is so insulting. <laughs> to no, not even give them any vocal. It was it was worse. It was like the I don't know how well this translated on the broadcast, but I remember when they introduced the Chinese team, there was a second silence. And then uh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, literally, yeah. I'm <laughs> literally dead for a second. You know what? If I was on stage, I think I would prefer the booze. Uh, yeah, me that, too. Yeah. I, I would prefer being booed rather than having the pity clap of just like, yeah. Yeah, a couple of people clapping sounds like horse shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, people just, don't even care enough yeah. to give you an emotion. Yeah. They don't yeah. even care enough about you to, yeah. to give a fuck. It's, yeah, pretty, exactly. it's pretty close in Japan as well when I went to go see a baseball match, like, because the stadium is like perfectly split up. So one side of the stadium is like one of the teams and the, the other side, yeah. Yeah, the away team and then okay. one of them is the home team. Yeah. Yeah. And at the time we, we were on the home team side. Um, like not that I really cared. I just wanted to go see the game. Yeah. But it was so funny because like exactly the same home team comes on, everyone's standing up, fucking shouting, spinning their towels around, just being like, yeah, let's fucking go. Moment the away team comes on, everyone just sits down and just kind of looks it's at It's so you. insulting, <laughs> dude. I mean, come on. Every now and then someone will be like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like this, it's it's a sporting event. Let's have some fucking rivalries yeah. in there. Let's like just acknowledge that there's rivalries there. Ag at least yeah, acknowledge as, the yeah, enemy. Yeah. As, long as, as long as it stop, you know, it doesn't go further than booze. You know, yeah. I think yeah. it's all, all in good fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you know, totally. it's, it's you know, it's, as long as it's just like little, you know, tongue in cheek, playful. It's a sporting event. We know it's a sporting hmm. event. That's we why know. I love. That's why I love fighting games. Community. Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. talk that, mad that, trash, they like, boo, they cheer. It's so fun to, to watch. To me, Get the boys some milk. <laughs> to me, to me the, that's why the fighting game community seems so fun because they seem like the right level of toxicity. Yeah, they're, like, they're all super into it and they're all passionate in a yeah. way that I think really translates to the viewer experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like you really care about these stories. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. everyone around you is so <laughs> into it. And that, that really feeds off, like you feed off of that. And that, mm. that's really important uh, to have that in sport. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think it's why football has been so uh, so sort of like dominant in, in like Europe and other places, mm, uh, yeah. you know, and like uh, South American stuff. Cause it's just, it's such a passionate thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, booing and cheering. It's all part of the, the passion. Mm. Yeah. Cause you know, we did have this world championship in Korea. So there was a, like a home team there that people yeah. were going to yeah. cheer for. And that, that was just like- That's why I'm excited for, cause next year it's in Europe. And oh, next Europe, year it's oh. in England. Yeah. And Europe, European fans are, well, that they're, they're, they're pretty rowdy. They're, they are probably the most rowdy crowds, I think, in terms of sporting events. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, yeah, the worst tourists. Yeah, we're the worst tourists, but we make for some of the funnest sporting events, I feel. Because <laughs> like, in a, I don't know if I spoke about this on the podcast, but when I went to watch, I watched I watched uh, a very big game of, of uh, basketball in LA. Mm. Oh yeah? I watched, uh, it was like one of the, 
a, a key game between the two best teams at the time, the LA Lakers and Celtics. I think they're, I think they're still the best teams. Mm. Yeah. Very good teams. I don't know. But one thing I found really weird is that they don't chant themselves. There's a, there's a speaker playing build-ups to chants to egg the crowd on to chant. Yeah. Oh, Japan's the same. Yeah, yeah it goes, do, do, do. And it would, like, keep, it would keep, like, it would keep, like, in, like, Telling them, hey, hey, chant defense, like, yeah. defense. <laughs> but it was, I was, I, in my head, I was like, this is so weird. I'm sitting here, I'm like, why? It's why like do you scripted go, cheer? Yeah, yeah, why yeah. do you guys have to be cute? Yeah. This doesn't happen yeah. in Europe. Yeah. Everyone no, just goes. No. They just yeah. start. They just don't shut up. Yeah. Like uh, you, you go I to find like, it really obnoxious. Yeah, you go to local, they, you go to local matches, and I don't know how everyone in the stadium just knows every chant that there is. <laughs> but yeah, I think you they, know? I think they just figure it out. It's not yeah, even yeah. just a chant either. It's always like the ones I've seen <laughs> online is like one guy starts the chant, and then yeah. there's like a call and response <laughs> thing that happens, and everybody knows the words perfectly. Yeah. knows exactly you, the timing of the clap. Have you seen yeah. those, have you, there's a few videos of guys who start the chants. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's really cool. Yeah. It's like, all right, watch this, and he starts chanting, and everyone joins in yeah. within like thirty seconds yeah it's really cool <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I remember i saw him which is like just one dude just like just holding the phone he's like i'm gonna stop the chant just stands up and he's like what do we think of blah 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 and everyone's like shit <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun yeah. right? it's like it's great yeah uh, i love that shit yeah <laughs> it's, it's good fun i i really hope that you know we, we don't we don't get rid of that in, yeah and uh, all sports yeah i, I would like to, i would like to see that translate into esports because esports unfortunately Bunch of fucking gamers. We're a lot of introverts, you know. Mm. We, 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 like going to League of Legends events and uh, other esports events, they know how to cheer. Right, they don't yeah. have to like make noise, but you know they don't know how to shit talk. Yeah, yeah, they don't know how to shit talk. Which uh, I think I mean it's 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 not encouraged, and it it's, also, it's it's also not encouraged. Uh, yeah, which I think is like a huge part. Like I think it's like football, guys, you can do it behind the keyboard, but not in real life. Well, even then, they're like, don't do that. <laughs> uh, I I forgot what I was gonna say. I had a point, and I totally forgot it. Uh, fuck me. Okay. I mean, they were like, League of Legends is toxic enough <laughs> Oh, I, I, I remember, I was gonna say like, but like League has done a fantastic job. They have like, they literally have writers to mm. craft the narratives. Right. To, to like, basically, you know, cause there's a lot of storylines happening, but they have to pick out stories and like kind of sell the audience on them. Mm. Uh, and it's something they've been really, really successful with and really good at. Uh, but that's just normal sporting. Things, yeah, right? yeah. But I yeah. feel like it, it happens almost because of the way that esports is structured, where there are a bunch of people, uh, we don't see them physically. Uh, we only see them on the on the rift under a screen name. We don't really get like much of a connection with the players. Yeah. Uh, other than like one or two very famous players, and because the rosters are to always changing, it's really hard to like find like hear about players and know what's happening. Yeah. And so, league that they've really done a really good job at like kind of picking out these stories, humanizing the people and kind of telling you the story as it goes. And as yeah. it's unfolding, they, they change it, yeah, which right. I think is really smart. Mm. Whereas in football, th there's like a bazillion commentators and, and pundits and people on the YouTube channels saying their thoughts. So there isn't, there isn't really a need for narrative as mm. much like officially, like they just, people just make up their own. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, well, and that's pretty successful doing that. I think one of the big advantages that the league esports has right now is one, it's been like, going on for so long, but two, because it's going to be going on for so long now that there are so many plays in like the kind of like league ecosystem that have just been around for really, really long time. We're getting there, we're getting there. Yeah, the, yeah. The, I think League of Legends on average is like uh, much older now uh, and also is one of the oldest esports scenes yeah, like in yeah. general. Like the people who are in it are, are generally like late twenties now. Right. Yeah. On average, I think maybe- Which is crazy to say the that average, that's the yeah. oldest. The average age of uh, e league esports, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's kind of cool. I I mean, I, I like that. I like that, yeah. that we're getting rid of this notion that you have to be- Like a certain yeah. like really, really young. That's Rocket League. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just that, yeah. Average, average age of someone- Most League of Legends uh, players are between 21 and 20. Oh no, that's, no, that's not professionals. Uh, go back, go back. I think you had something though. Yeah, you, you had something before go back. Uh, it, was Rocket, it was Rocket League, but it also said League. Yeah. Rocket League's 21, according to esports chart. By, by contrast, the, the average age in League of Legends yeah, in CSGO so, is 25 and 26 respect. Yeah, which is a lot older, uh, just because yeah. they're a lot, they're we're already We're already too old to be Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> we're, too, we're too far gone. Yeah. God damn. Well, it's, it's, it's cool because like, you know, that, that means you have time to emotionally invest yourself in some of these bigger players. Uh, I mean, obviously when we were there, the most famous League of Legends player was 
of all time was playing Faker and Sydney, who knows nothing about League of Legends at all, was just like, oh, why, why is everyone hyping up this Faker? I don't fucking get it. Like, mm. it's, it's, it's like, it sounds dumb. It sounds fucking dumb. And then she saw like Faker pop off in like one of the games when he was like- one like, Faker v the GOAT! One v 4 <laughs> and Sydney just turns to me and she goes, I get it. <laughs> and I was like, yes, that's what I'm talking about, Sydney. Damn. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun as well. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, there is a downside to all of this. Oh no. What? <sighs> what happened? Just, just like the sacrifice we had to make. So after watching League, what do we do? The first thing we want to do is uh, go to a, this is actually like the highlight of my trip to Korea, actually. This is uh, really fun. Yeah, we are uh, me, Connor, Dardis and Emily. We go to a PC cafe. <laughs> and we just stay up till 3, 4 a.m. playing League of Legends. It was Legends. fucking awesome. And oh my God, I have, I cannot remember the last time I had so much fun gaming. Like- It's so good. <laughs> it's you can order noodles to your seat <gasps> and the noodles were so fire. It was so goddamn good. You can get coffees, you can yeah. get teas, you can yeah. get drinks. I'm, I'm not even mad, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> so we, we we had to get some League Korean accounts, which was kind of hard to do. Uh, yeah. We managed to get them and then we, we we were playing some games together. It was really fun. Yeah, uh, and all... it just reminded me, like, it just made me realize how much I missed gaming when you have your bros next to you physically. Oh, dude, land parties are always the best. Oh. Like, there is nothing that compares to a land party. Yeah. Like, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's not the same otherwise. It just, it was so reminiscent. It brought me back to, like, my university days. Yeah. Where <laughs> me and the boys were just up till 3 a.m. playing League. Some of the most fun I've had in a very, very long time. And uh, the knock-on effect they had was, unfortunately, I was really wanting to chase that high again. No! And got back to Japan, oh! had a moment of weakness, and oh, I was like- This is like watching a friend relapse on drugs. Like and I was like, maybe, no. maybe it's the same. Maybe it's the same. I had a lot of fun playing League of Legends in Korea. Loaded up uh, my Japanese account, and I started playing League again. Oh. And I just, I, I finished like two games and I was like, I can't look myself in the mirror again. Again, I'm not your dad, but I am disappointed <laughs> in you. Like, <laughs> there was other ways. <laughs> you know, I think I would have just preferred you to be a gacha gamer, to be honest with you. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't realize there was something better than a gacha player, but it turns out there yeah. is. But uh, yeah, I will say PC bangs Ugh. in Korea, they fucking hit different. Uh, yeah. They're so cheap as well. Yeah. I bet, yeah. We went to an expensive one and it was like, it was like 10, 10 bucks for four hours. Yeah, that was, an that was an expensive that's one. That's nothing. Yeah, that like this was the like high like the the high tier ones because we went to the official SKT PC Bang right. uh, T1, yeah, yeah SKT uh, T1 PC Bang, and I didn't realize this until uh, I went like a second time and I looked at the specs. All the PC there's uh, all the PCs there had like forty seventies like graphics cards, mm. so they were like the top high end PC specs. Mm. So of course you expect like the uh, you know better hardware as well, sure. but you can get really, really cheap PC bangs as well. Mm. and still have pretty decent gaming PCs to go. Yeah. Uh, and I went to one with Sydney and- uh, <laughs> You went to I, one with Sydney? I went to one with Sydney. <laughs> Cause uh, we were we were like, oh, let's try playing uh, Final Fantasy 14 again. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like- Oh my God. You're I double was... dipping. Yeah. <laughs> You're double di this is like, this is like, I went back onto heroin and just, I just decided to try cocaine again as well. You know, just why not? Let's I double dip. I, I, I get it. I just like playing in a, playing next to your bros, playing next to your partner. Okay, playing. look, I get that aspect. Right, yeah, but yeah. you shouldn't be double dipping. <laughs> you know, I, leave leave some space in between. Pick one. I just wanted to see what the experience would be like. Because you know, you know. they say pick your poison. <laughs> they don't say pick all the poisons at the same time. You know, <laughs> that's what I did basically. God damn it. Um, yeah, I I kind of really really miss that culture. Yeah, uh, because I would I would love to spend more time. You know, I think I would PC game more if I could. If mm. there was like more PC internet, like. PC bangs in Japan. No, yeah, totally. Because uh, it's a totally different vibe uh, playing next to people uh, and just being in an environment. This is gonna sound so sad. Being in an environment where everyone's gaming, <laughs> everyone's no it's, life. It's definitely chill. Like yeah, it's yeah, way yeah. more chill. Just, see, just seeing people just like skipping lunch, just ordering your noodles and just Bro. like playing League. You're like, oh, I, I want to be a degenerate now. <laughs> I, I actually want to be a degenerate. Oh, the noodles are so good. And it was so I good know what Garth's well. gonna do when he goes into retirement. <laughs> Just Honest, like, honestly, like perfect holiday. Korea <laughs> is, is, you know, you know, Korea, I'm sure it has like some what, we're culture. Gonna, yeah, we gotta, go, we gotta go back just for a weekend. Yeah. We just, we just game. Yeah, just me, game. Me, me and Connor wanna go back and our holiday <sighs> is just simply gonna be, just wake up 10 a.m., hit up the PC bang, no life it for like, 
six hours or something. Go get like a fucking amazing Korean dinner or something yeah. like that. Come back, play a bit more games. Get like, you know, have some drinks or life. something. That's a life. Have some drinks and uh, sleep and then uh, repeat for like two days or three days. Yeah, like you that. guys are definitely game more gamers than I am. That's for sure. Dude, there's just this, it kind of like, captured that uh, uh i like, say i joke but that, i would be into it as well it's kind of like capturing that that the the summer break when you're like yeah, yeah, yeah 14 yeah. yeah you're old enough yeah. to like really enjoy video games now oh for sure uh, and, and you get just days or hours yeah. on end yeah. to just waste and play oh dude games. i remember when i was like 14 13 and like i'd invite my friends over during the summer holidays yeah. and we'd lo- we'd connect a bunch of pcs together and do like a civ 2 land party mm. all day like that was the shit i'm, I'm gonna bro, fucking bro, you, you, you want to come with and play final fantasy 14 <sighs> <laughs> come play, come play League of Legends with us. Yeah. Come on, with the with the bros. God, man. you know how hard I've been trying to avoid playing fourteen. <laughs> look, look, I'm telling you, you're gonna like have one day of it. And if I go, <laughs> no, that's the thing. This is the scary thing. I don't want to say yes because I know if I am in that position, especially with you boys, and we're playing fourteen. I am gonna be hooked. <laughs> and then I, you will never see a video from me ever I'm, again. I'm not gonna play 14. <laughs> I'm playing 14 if that happens. Over Lee, I'm playing 14. I just like, it's, it's it reignited in me something I thought was like dead, which was the feeling of, as Connor said, the summer break yeah. where you just take a holiday, which is like an adult holiday mm. where you, Mm. You uh, block a bit of time off, but instead of traveling, doing something exciting, touching grass, you just uh, just fucking no life. This <laughs> is it. This is DJ it. It was great. That's yeah, fair. That's it's, fair. It's great. Um, and yeah, that was basically our Korean experience. <laughs> Literally, the highlight of yeah, the story kinda, was the kind, kind of was. I'm not. I'm not gonna. Not saying that there are not uh, other things in Korea which were not like great. Yeah. Um. You know, I went shopping. I much prefer Korean fashion, but um, yeah, my, my, my highlight was just playing League of Legends. And that it was sounds, very fun. That sounds so sad, but it was so much fun. I swear to God. I respect it. Oh God. Whatever. It was very fun. We're gonna do it again. All right. I'm gonna take a piss break. This episode is sponsored by Harry's. Boys, do you feel like you have too many unnecessary subscriptions nowadays? Yes, yeah, yes. definitely. Like sometimes you just subscribe to something and you don't even really need it. But you know something you actually do almost every day? It's well, shaving. That's why you should subscribe to Harry's. I pretty much only exclusively use Harry's. You guys know this. I've spoken about this on many occasions. Uh, it's pretty much the only razor I want to use. In fact, I don't have any uh, razor blades from Harry right now. And I am waiting, holding, because I don't dare use any other razor. That's how much I like the shave that Harry's gives me. With Harry's, you get high quality German engineered blades right to your door. Every order saves you money compared to that big brand most guys are used to buying. Get them as low as, get this, $2. $2? $2 per blade, but only by going to harrys.com slash trash taste. You know what? Harry's doesn't only make razors. They have great skincare products to complement your great shave as well, guys. Absolutely. A smooth shave shouldn't be rough on your wallet. The Mm -hmm. trial set is $13 of value for just $3 at harrys.com slash trash taste. It includes a five blade German engineered razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover. So get a subscription that saves you time and money with Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just $3 by going to harrys.com slash trash taste. Dollars. That's harrys.com slash trash taste for a $3 trial set. Okay, boys, I want to bring up something. An what? anime topic. All right. That's right. Oh, wow. I know. Wow. But this one is this one I'm actually excited for because Don Da Don just got announced for an anime today. Holy shit. And I'm so fucking hyped. I just saw that as because well. Because it's Science Saru. Bro. I know. Dude. What? It's Science Saru. Who's that? It's- uh, Fucking, what's his name? Ping Pong uh, the Animation. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, oh. Or if- the sorry, the yeah, Galaxy. Galaxy. Basically, yeah. basically, basically, the weird studio. Yeah, nice. yeah. are doing Dawn to Dawn, and the oh, trailer cool. looks sick as fuck. I haven't seen the trailer yet. Oh, dude, but, it's uh, insane. Yeah, I actually got the chance to read the first few chapters of Dawn to Dawn on stream, yeah. and it is wild. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> so if you don't know what Dawn to Dawn is, I believe it's a Shonen Jump. Jump Plus. Well, Jump Plus. I believe. Manga. Yeah. Uh, and it's from one of the editors, not not editors, assistants. One, assistants of the Chainsaw Man author, Tatsuki Fujimoto. And I don't know what was going on in that studio when he was making like Chainsaw Man or whatever, or whatever manga they were all working on together, but every artist or every <laughs> author that's come from that studio Dude. has just made like the mo- like the weirdest banger manga. His assistants ever... don't miss. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Legit. No one on that team has missed so far. Because the other, the other assistant uh, was um, 
Was he the guy who made um, uh, Hell's Paradise? Hell's Paradise. Yeah. 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 Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. So they, like they all well, come. They all came from, came from the same a stacked group. Of I know <laughs> they don't miss me. <laughs> yeah, but Don really, Don, I, really, I really enjoyed Hell's Paradise. Yeah, I yeah. did too. I did too, and I think you'd really like Don Don as well because yeah, it's absolutely so. fucking wild. Especially yeah. if, if that studio is making it. I'll, I'll, I mean, yeah. Ping Pong Animation is one of my yeah. favorites. Yeah, because uh, it's like stoked. from the first four. They also make Devilman Crybaby. Yes, yes. yes. I yes. also yeah. love Devilman Crybaby. I'm trying to remember the fucking director's name. What's what the fuck's his name? Marco Mus. Fuck, Masa, Yuasa. Yuasa Masaki. Mas, Masaki Yuasa. Masaki Yuasa, yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> that's it, that's yeah. it, yeah. I don't know if Yuasa's directing this one, but it's from his studio. Yeah, it's from his studio. Yeah, Science Sarah. Uh, so most most recently, I actually saw the, uh, I actually seen a few episodes of the Scott Pilgrim anime. That's- uh, Oh yeah, uh, what's the first episode on. of that? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's good. It was weird. I, think, <laughs> I, I, it's weird, but I, I kind of fucked with it. I thought it was I just an interesting a, take. Just saw a lot of people on Twitter arg- arguing about it. Yeah, I, I, well, yeah, I, I didn't know about like the arguments or the controversy around it, so I went to to it completely blind. Mm. Um, and I don't know what I was expecting, and I don't know whether I liked it or not. I yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I've only seen the first episode, so it's hard to discern whether yeah. I like it or not. But I think I'm going to like it. I yeah. don't know that. Also, it is weird. I also saw that my analyst w- wouldn't, wouldn't label it as, as anime. Yeah, which is dumb. That's, oh, really? That, that to me is dumb. They, they said it wasn't intended for the Japanese audience. Yeah. And that's how they decide if something's anime, if it's for the Japanese the fuck? audience. <laughs> which is bizarre, because Japan <laughs> would be like, what the fuck? What are you which talking is, about? Which is like yeah. the weirdest mental gymnastics uh, I've seen. Yeah, they'll do yeah. everything to just say shit's not anime. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, they were like, they were like, oh, there, there must be something in here. Oh, it's uh, it wasn't made by Japanese people. Well, actually oh, it's got, it was. It's got uh, Chris Evans in yeah, here, yeah. Uh, uh, which makes it uh, for white people. Yeah, no, <laughs> like this Scott Pilgrim uh, takes off is an anime, it was made, in, uh, it was animated in Japan. Yep. It was storyboarded by Japanese people. People working, it, like, it was basically an all Japanese theme. Mm. Uh, and you could tell that because one of the biggest things that bothered me about uh, about it was the lip flaps just didn't match. Oh. And mm. I, it was so obvious that the recordings was done at, at different times from when the lip flaps were like finished mm. because it, this must be how like Japanese people feel. I don't know. <laughs> like to, like well, in, in, in Japanese anime, generally the, Lip flaps don't always match up. They're not, yeah. not nearly as strict But they're also basic it. enough where it, even if they don't necessarily yeah. match up, it still feels more natural, I guess. Yeah, it mm. works. I, I don't know how it works, but it, it weirdly works, but they, yeah. don't, they don't really care about the flaps having to match perfectly. But yeah. in English, yeah. we very much, we do care. Yeah, uh, and I didn't think I would notice it until I started noticing it and I, then I couldn't stop noticing it. <laughs> well, now that you've said that, I didn't <laughs> notice it while watching it and now I'm going to, so yeah. thanks for that. Yeah, it, 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 was, it wasn't like every time, but it just like sometimes it would just like be like a tiny bit off or something. I'd yeah. be like, ah, oh, this is what it's like watching originally dubbed anime, I guess. This is why I had a really hard time playing Final Fantasy 16 in Japanese because they lip synced it to the English voice acting. Oh yeah. So yeah. when I was playing it and I saw the cutscenes, I'm just like, shit, I can't concentrate on this because they, I can read the lips and they're saying something else yeah. to what I'm hearing. I, and I, it's so off putting. I remember watching Scott Pilgrim the movie and I thought it was pretty good. Mm. But then on Twitter, I keep seeing this thing about him dating like a 17 year old or something. And I'm like, I don't remember that. Am I yeah, done? Yeah, was 17. I think she was. <laughs> I think she was. She was in high school, right? That was I, that was the whole. That, that yeah, was the whole I guess so. Yeah, yeah. That was the oh. whole thing. Yeah, I just don't remember that being a big deal. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just remember watching it, and I was like, I guess this. Well, makes when sense. did when does Scott Pilgrim come out? Like the the original movie? Um, twenty ten. Yeah, twenty nine, twenty ten. Yeah. Oh, holy shit! That was a long time. Oh my god, that was thirteen it was, years ago. It was a good movie. Yeah. I, I thought it was an amazing movie. Yeah. Uh, it still is like one of- I, Edgar Wright. Yeah, I think it was, I think this was on my three by three, I think, uh, for one of my Toronto, favorite 22 year old Scott Pilgrim is a bass player for Unsick and Rand. He is dating Knife Chow, a 17. <laughs> 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 I do, I totally <laughs> forgot that. Yeah, I think the thing about the new Scott Pilgrim anime that I couldn't get my, I couldn't fully invest into, I guess, mm. was I think I realized I really, really fucking like the film. Mm. But also I think, I'm perfectly satisfied with the film. Yeah, you know? yeah. Really didn't add much. And yeah, yeah. And th- Scott Pilgrim takes off, goes like a completely different direction to the film. It like gives more time for to explore each like evil X and whatever, and mm. actually less time with Scott Pilgrim, uh, which is I think a big thing that people were mad about. Which is uh, at least where I've gotten to. Scott Pilgrim is 
barely in it yeah. at all. It's always a gamble, isn't it, when you have like a new adaptation of a show that is, you know, highly praised, beloved, and yeah. people expect the story to go exactly in that same direction. And then when they do, a, yeah. a, you know, and they flip the dime on and they're like, actually, we're going to go in a slightly different direction. Mm. Yeah. Then people are like, why? why? Why would you try and fix something that's not broken? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The anime is very highly reviewed though. Yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty a, high. It's, it's interesting, definitely. Yeah. I, I, I think it's it was just weird where I was watching it and I was like, I guess I'm enjoying this, but mm. I think I'd rather just rewatch the movie. Mm. I was like, I, I, have, <laughs> I have my personal emotional attachment to the movie. Yeah. And this is going like a completely different direction. And I was like, uh, maybe I'm just not, maybe I just wouldn't be a fan of the comics. I don't know if this is mm. more faithful to the original comics mm. and the movie, but I think the reason I really liked the movie was not so much the storyline, but just cause of Edgar Wright. Oh, Edgar uh, Wright is because I think, good. I think that was the reason why I yeah. really, really fucking like Scott Pilgrim. Mm. Um, and this has a bit of quirkiness to it, but nothing that really compares to the crazy shit that Edgar Wright did. But that's always right. scary though, isn't it? Like, cause you know, I'm kind of feeling the same way about the upcoming uh, Avatar The Last Airbender series, like the live action yeah, series. Yeah, the Netflix one. Yeah, because it's series? like, yeah they're, yeah, they're they're doing a proper, like not with fucking Shyamalan this time. Uh, well, because the fucking Shyamalan live action is the only thing we had and that was the worst thing in the planet. Why do we need to remake it? I don't get why, why we remake it. I think it's just because for a lot of people, it's extremely nostalgic and people actually want to see like, I don't know if people are asking for it, but I, I think- don't, I don't want to see it. Yeah, but I think that, the, <laughs> I think the creators of the series of the original animation, wanted to actually do like a proper live action. They wanted to like bring it back in a way that they'd be happy with. I would uh, I would be down for it mm. if it wasn't following the original James Cameron storyline. Because mm. I think the weird thing about Avatar for me is- Wait, wait, <laughs> James Cameron. Oh, no, we're talking about different avatars? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah we're not, wait, what are we talking about? We're not about? talking about the blue people avatar. <laughs> We're talking about an Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> wait, wait. I was like, hold on, wait, 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 wait. That's why I was like, they're making an Avatar TV show? What? I thought they were already making four films of this shit. Bro was, bro was cooking on five minutes figuring out what to say. It took me a second to be like, something's off about this. <laughs> Why would they make a TV series about already a live action movie? That's what I was trying to like get my head around. When, Cause you were like, oh, they're making an Avatar TV series. That made, that's why I'm really worried. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can understand why you're worried. I'd be worried as well if they were making a James Avatar, James Cameron Avatar TV series. But I was about to like defend it because I was like, Avatar has an interesting world that oh doesn't- Oh my God, okay. no. Okay, I'm talking fucking... about The Last Airbender. Fucking Jake Sully, bro. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think Jake Sully would be fine if he was an Earthbender. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to see Jake Sully in live action. <laughs> no, no, they're, they're remaking uh, Avatar. Last, Last Airbender. Bender. Oh God. We yeah. Probably, uh, to be fair, we probably should have said that. I did say that. He just doesn't listen. You said, listen. No, you said Avatar. You didn't say yeah, Avatar. I think you did. I definitely Avatar. said Last Airbender. Okay, I didn't know they were making. Well, didn't didn't they already make a live action movie of this? Yeah, the yeah, Shyamalan awesome. movie, and it was one of the worst rated movies like of the two thousands. Uh, so in my, head, in my head, I'm like, I don't want. I feel like it just doesn't need a live action. But to then, be fair, but then I, f I said that about One Piece. And, yeah, and it was very to good. be fair, I did watch the uh, the trailer for it because they released the trailer for the yeah. new one. Mm. It, I mean, f obviously, it looks so much better than the Shanghai movie. Like, not even a question. And but I am like kind of this is, keeping a healthy amount of skepticism to it this, as well. This because is like One Piece has like the One Piece live action was the double edged sword. I think because so. it proved to audiences that live action animations. Could work, yep. and yep. now I'm just like, oh. and now there's a scramble to like but remake it's, 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 all it's, of these. It's one diamond on a top a pile of dog shit. But you know it, what I mean? it, yeah. like, it was the proof of concept. Yeah, that all yeah, they needed yeah. was one working you, example. You know what else is also a proof of concept this year? Just mm. making original shit. Like original movies have been crushing it this year. Mm. It's been such a good year for like if you are a, a Marvel and fucking dog shit Disney uh, hater, mm. which I am. Uh, I'm have, so happy have that original these... movies been crushing it this year. Yeah. I already uh, Oppenheimer. I, know, I already know Oppenheimer. Barbie. Uh, well, Barbie. I don't well, really count Barbie, Barbie as Barbie's original. <laughs> although, although I, I, the concept of the film is original, so yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. give it that. You know, we. Uh, it's an original story. The Martin Scorsese film came out, although it wasn't. I thought it was a bit long. That's it's done really well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a few other movies this year that have done really well, but generally, like a lot of these big 
productions that would only ever do well have not been doing not, not so well. Mm. Yeah. Which uh, it's nice to kind of feel like it's kind of changing a little bit. And, I, and it's just showing that, hey, I think audiences now, I think we're, they're tired of remakes. I think we're tired. Yeah, I think totally. as a collective audience, we are we just want new ideas. We're not- well, Especially yeah. after all the fucking live action Disney remakes as well. It's like, I think that was the real nail in well, the Well, yeah, like this year like, we've had done. the fucking Little Mermaid remake, uh, yeah. you know, the, and, and even then the original stuff feels so- um, uh, reg like regurgitative. We had the Pinocchio remake come yeah. out the last Pinocchio year. The Pinocchio was pretty good. Oh, really? I didn't see it. it it's like a totally different uh, retelling of Pinocchio. Wait, they did a remake of Peter Pan um, this year. What? Isn't that isn't that uh like one of those like garbage? Peter movies, Pan though? and Wendy. I never even Peter heard Pan of and that. Wendy. The fuck? Okay, <laughs> never remakes that aside, because nobody gives a fuck. Uh, what I did watch that was uh, very good and mm. original and anime. Oh. Uh, Pluto, watch Pluto. Oh yeah. Oh, you finished it? Yeah, I finished it. Oh shit, I'm like only it? like two episodes in. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah, I fucking loved it. Yeah, I think it's pretty my insane. favorite anime I've watched this year. Oh dude, it's, oh, it's yeah. Urasawa, man. He doesn't uh, miss. Yeah. It's so fucking good. And yeah. I knew nothing about Astro Boy. Mm. Uh, I, I didn't even know that was supposed to be Astro Boy yeah. Yeah. until I finished it. Yeah, that's <laughs> the, the, but that's what was so smart on Urasawa when he yeah. was writing Pluto is that he made sure that you don't have to know anything about Astro Boy I to really, be invested really, really, in the story. Really. And, 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 and you, want, you want to know something? What? Like Pluto is probably like, uh, you know, it's it's a lot of common consensus that Pluto is one of his weakest works. What? Yeah, and, and like, right, right. It's that or Billy Bat. Yeah, that like or Billy the Bat. Two and, and I'm which like both amazing. And I'm like, this is your weakest fighter. Yeah. Which I which, I I have really liked it. I think the ending was a little little bit rushed, but yeah. the rest of it I I really really liked. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I I remember what seeing the first two episodes of it. I just oh he my God, is I love such it. he is such a master when it comes to building a mystery yeah. and suspense. It was like the the pilot of the episode was so good. I, I just love the scene where they had this kind of like Silence of the Lamb kind of like interview with like the robot that mm. killed somehow. So it's, it's kind of a sci-fi world where robots are in human society. And of course, robots can't kill, kill humans uh, except for one robot that has proven to be able to kill humans in the past uh, and have like the Silence of the Lambs kind of like interview with him. I fucking love that character. And that was such a, that was mm. such a like an interesting character mm. study. He's right? just so good at writing the most interesting like villains. Yeah. as well like because like i don't know how he because like you know monster obviously johan is like an amazing example of it but even you know the robot character in pluto like he's Wait, just, he, wrote, he wrote monster yeah yeah he wrote monster i didn't know that yeah <laughs> he wrote monster he did monster 20th century boys what yeah, yeah which oh, are yeah, like considered his, right. so the, yeah that's what you're going up against yeah. oh shit. Okay. Yeah. This, 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 man, this man is oh, good he is the goat. yeah, yeah. yeah. The goat. but like you know he's so good at writing not only just like interesting and multi-layered villains but just mm. villains that you it's it you can take time with getting to know mm. and it, i don't know how he does it like and this is one thing i've always been like extremely uh, fascinated with and have so much respect for mystery writers and mm. stuff like that is that like the really good mystery writers are able to build up this mystery in a nice slow easy to process way was, yeah. without it spoiling anything yeah yeah, yeah. there's you know? such like faith in you as the audience to to be engaged as yeah. well that they didn't it didn't have to go crazy right away. Yeah. yeah. It was very willing to like allow you to kind of just be like, hey, here's a little bit of what's yeah. going on. He can yeah. sprinkle here's just enough hints to get you hooked where without spoiling yeah. a large majority I of really, why he's really, like really, really liked it. And he's so good at that. In an age where a lot of anime kind of feel like it's just kind of samey. rushed, rushed yeah. together, samey mm -hmm. and yeah. almost unintentional. Uh, everything felt very, very intentional in this show. That oh I really, yeah. yeah. I, every single- He doesn't part, waste any time. Yeah, every yeah. part of the yeah. show just felt amazing. And I yeah. really, really enjoyed it. And uh, please watch Pluto if you haven't. It's no, it's, so it's amazing. It's, so it's definitely, good. I don't the know- The manga is great I don't well. know where it would rank, but it's definitely like one of my, it's going to be, I already know one of my favorite anime of the year. Uh, yeah. Cause I think uh, one thing I love about how he introduces story is that he's one of the few people who you can be like really invested in this like main, like a plot line. And then I don't know where he'll just like switch to a different character. And you're like, <laughs> why the fuck would I give a shit about this character? Who is he? Why does he matter? And then you get invested into this separate storyline yeah. and you're like, oh shit, I'm invested in this. Yeah. And then at the end, he's like, actually, this is why this relates to the first story. And you're like, holy shit. 20th Century Boys was like nothing but that. Oh, 
yeah, and that, that, was, that was that. And it was done so <laughs> incredibly yeah, well. Like yeah. every character, as you said, every character and everything they said, everything they did had some kind and of it meaning. built up to like a grander storyline. Yeah. Oh my God, he's so good. He's so fucking that's good. That's why he's the GOAT. And yeah. it felt like a complete package, which I, I really mm. feel like I've been missing a lot in anime lately where yeah. I'm so used to watching half a season and then it, it gets delayed or whatever. And then that's yeah. because of the conditions are, are dreadful right now. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it really felt like this one, this show had a time to cook. Like yeah, they yeah. really let it, like, it came out when it was ready. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. manga like came that. out quite a while ago, I think. Yeah, so yeah, they've, been, they've been working on this for a long, long time. It's a pretty old series. Yeah. Um, but I've heard that- I've heard that if this one does well, which go yeah. watch it, so it does do well. 2003, yeah. it came out. Uh, they they would like to adapt more of uh, Naoki Urasawa's works. 20th Century Boys. When and are we getting an anime of 20th Century Boys? If they are able to adapt his magnum opus, in my opinion, which is 20th Century Boys, I will literally come. <laughs> uh, that's not a euphemism. Yeah, I, 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 I will just come. I, I, I literally- I will come. actually watch anime if, if he does that. <laughs> Even Billy Bat as well, which is a, another fantastic Urasawa manga. Like if, if they do a good adaptation of that, which might be a little bit harder, just yeah. because a lot of the characters are not human in that. Uh, but yeah, pe pe people need to read more Urasawa shit. And like, it's yeah. so yeah. underrated. I, I like it when- Concept to explore de like decently. Sometimes they, they they some shows try to talk about morality, and it comes from a point that I just I really am like okay sure <laughs> yeah like yeah. hard to one, relate to oh yeah well not even hard to relate to but just it feels like the the nuance the show is struggling to express the idea like, yeah. fully mm. uh, and it really felt like this one kind of nailed every single kind of like moral conundrum it was trying to present to you as the audience yeah, yeah, yeah I really for enjoyed sure. it so please watch Pluto because I want more of his shows because yeah. I. Yep. Don't want to read it. And watch Monster as well. Also a great anime. Monster's also fat. I didn't mm -hmm. know he was Monster. Well, yeah. Monster's great. Monster's just too slow though. To, it's kind of hard to recommend. It's a bit of a slow burner, I it's think. It's 70 today's episodes standards, yeah. and 30 of them are very slow. <laughs> I mean, read the manga. The manga is probably better, but read 20th but Century like, Boys. But, but read 20th I Century want, Boys. I, I should read it. You should read 20th Century Boys. 20th Century Boys. Boys isn't just my favorite manga. I think it's just my favorite story that's ever been written. Uh, genuinely, like it's. I can't disagree with you on. Yeah, that, I mean, honestly. it's it's it's, so uh, it's like from a critical perspective, it's an absolute masterpiece. But also for all the ideas it explores, it's just like really personally related to me as well. Um, Even the live action was good for yeah. 20th Century Boys. It's, it's so weird because he. Cause he's a musician, right? So music was like a big kind of like aspect in 20th Century Boys. Uh, and like the fact that he just wrote a song in a manga. Yeah. <laughs> for, he wrote he wrote his own song for a manga. And I'm just like, but I respect it. But how, how where the fuck did you get this idea from? There's <laughs> so, Naoki and Inio Asano, the only yeah. two people who can do that. And they're both goats. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I highly, highly recommend Pluto. That's definitely going to be- Please watch it on Netflix. One of it's the so top anime of this year as well. I feel well. not enough people are talking about it either, which is the saddest thing. Oh, I haven't thing. seen anyone. Cause I mean, I think it's cause, I think it's cause Jujutsu Kaisen is stealing the spot <sighs> right now. With, in many ways. In many uh, ways. Yeah. <laughs> Good and bad. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the Twitter stuff? No. All the animators being like, this is hell. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, but I've they've been saying that. that for a while, right? Yeah, but no, but like it's this really is, bad it's now. Oh really, shit, really? really bad. Which I, okay, here's the thing. I don't know if if this is just, here's, here's the sad part. I don't know if this is uh, a new development mm. or if, you know, if this she is something that peak. we've probably, that has probably always been a thing and people are just now more vocal about it because mm. there are more animators on Twitter, right? you know? It's, yeah, yeah, the more anime is on Twitter and yeah. it's also a really big show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, th I, I would think, like to hope it's not the latter, but yeah. we never know. I right? think if uh, it, in, in a, it, the world is as such that is, it's very sad, if this was like another Isekai anime and the anime was like, oh, this is fucking, I can't do this anymore. And yeah. I'd be like, okay, well, all right. Yeah. I, I don't want that dog shit show anyway. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but, you know, I think because it's a show that everyone is really talking about and then hearing that all the animators are really struggling, it's yeah. like, okay. Oh, this is kind of fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's also I, fucked up that it takes a show like this to people to kind of care. Yeah, mm. it's fucked up. And I think, you know, the silver lining is that because I guess Jujutsu Kaisen is so big because this thing has been prevalent in the anime industry yeah. for fucking since the beginning of for anime, sure, basically. Yeah. Um, 
And it feels like now more people are getting aware of it and more people are talking about it than ever before just because of how big Jujutsu Kaisen is. And also the animation is absolutely fucking batshit insanely good Yeah, uh, mm. in this new season that I think everyone is like- Jujutsu Kaisen is no bro, longer mid. You Joey. have to- it, <laughs> It's hard. Not like, that it was before, it, but it, it, I swear to God, it's so far beyond- uh, I'm not gonna support a show that punishes animators actually. Feels, so. Okay, all right, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It feels- it, feels almost bad like mm. uh like fawning over the animation and saying how amazing it is and then equally knowing what is what is the cost What's the of making it. yeah uh, mm. it, but it, it fuck me it's so good and i i hate that it's so good because I, I feel so bad for these animators but and everyone's like what can we do what can they can they strike it's like i mean uh <laughs> i mean if you do then you're not strike, gonna get a striking, new episode striking has happened in japan uh, yeah. uh but it is very rare. Yes, uh, and it's not very effective. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's very debatable yeah. how how effective it is in yeah. Japan. Yeah, um, and unfortunately, because they're hiring a lot of people online, I think they're just churning through. That's this kind of shitty thing, right? Is that like it's not? This isn't really an issue that like, what, average what can watches like, what, what, can what, help. Yeah, what with can the average? Way? Is there anything the average anime viewer can do except for just be more aware of I it? I think I think it. the only way that it will change is if like the actual industry itself just kind of does a top down reshuffling of just how yeah, well, we know things that, work. That but happen that doesn't in happen in Japan because they love tradition. I mean, it, the thing is, I think this goes beyond just like the anime industry. Of course, that's like one yeah. example it's of just it. Just entertainment industry in general. It's, right? it's just like, you mm. know, it's, it's one Japanese work culture and expectation. Yeah. Uh, and it's, and it, there needs to be a change from a systematic level. Mm. Um, I, I feel there's there's not so much the average person can do, which kind of like sucks because you kind of feel helpless. Yeah. But this issue runs really, really fucking deep. Yeah. Um, totally. But we got good, we got good anime, right? <laughs> yeah, hey! Hey! It's hey! Oh, hey! Ah, but that well, that fight, last though. is oh, that that fight, though. <laughs> Crazy. But I hey, mean. Gojo's popping off, hey, Lord. <laughs> God, it's so fast. The Kuno is wild. <laughs> oh, God. It is insane. You, it is actually, you should watch it. I mean, I've seen the gifts, yeah. Uh, yeah, like the animation, I feel like it's been, I don't know how each episode has been some of the coolest shit I've ever seen. You know? Yeah, I, I, I almost feel that, I think you said this to me off camera. You said that if, if if we were doing anime fights of the year, all the nominations would be Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh yeah, the the best fights of the year was is Jujutsu Kaisen fighting against itself. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, there is, it, it is shocking. Damn. The only it's, one who can defeat me is me. Yeah. So like when you watch an anime, it almost feels like normally there's this natural like cycle where it's it builds up and there's a one big fight where there's a lot of like a, a lot of crazy animation going on. Yeah, and then you're like, okay, cool, I can I can kind of decompress. Yeah, and Jujutsu Kaisen's like, hey, every episode we up it. Yeah. And you're like, okay, what the fuck? And mm. every single episode you're like, oh my God. Okay, Jesus, right. Oh my, fuck. oh wow, holy sh what? Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's just crazy. Mm. Yeah, and I heard like from the manga readers that the biggest fight of the arc isn't even like close to here yet. It's the, there's, the, there's an even bigger fight that's coming. And How? I'm like, what? We've had like three, four amazing banger fights already. And then there's there's still more to come. All the animators just like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, more. I mean, this might age poorly because we don't know what the quality of future episodes is going to be. Yeah, uh, I would just rather them delay it. Yeah, I'd, yeah, ra yeah. I'd rather them just not release this uh, if, it, if it's costing this, but obviously there's no yeah. shot that's happening. There's no shot yeah. that's happening, uh, unfortunately. It's, it, it's, it's too big. Yeah, I would rather them delay it as well. Mm. Uh, I think everyone, I think 90% 90, 90 of people, 99, <laughs> would agree that they'd rather just the show be done in, in a correct way where people aren't have, feeling like they have to go and complain on Twitter. Yeah, yeah but they're also going to if they want to get that result, right? Yeah. Because they'd be like, I can't believe they went on a month hiatus. What the fuck? At, at a good point too. And like, there's always going to be two sides of the opinion on that. So well, yeah. it's they can't I, win. I don't know if you, if you saw Gone, but uh, Invincible, uh, it's after episode four mm -hmm. of this season two. Oh yeah. I it's guess. going on a hiatus. Oh yeah. really? Uh, for until 2024. Yeah. Oh shit. And people on Twitter were like, that's fucked up. And there was like, like tons of tweets doing oh. really well that were just kind of like, this is what the fuck, what's the point of this? All right. And then it, it well, was- Why like, are they going on hiatus, do you know? Uh, I, I think it's cause they're- <laughs> To I, give the animators time. I think it's, yeah, I think it's just to give, I <laughs> think, I, I mean, could you check this guy? Yeah, I don't, I I think don't know, it's the first time I'm hearing time. it. Uh, I mean, that's good. Cause I haven't started season two yet. So. Yeah. And it does suck. Cause you're like, man, 
halfway through a season sucks. Yeah. You kind of wish that- it, I would I would have been completely okay with them just delaying the whole season. Yeah, so I, I kind of prefer know. the season being delayed yeah. and getting it all in one go, but I understand. Um, yep. But yeah, so it's gone on a bit of a break. Okay. And it's like people, I understand now why shows are very reluctant to do this because oh. the reaction was just like, they were like, what the fuck? Mm, How, yeah. what, why would you fucking do that? Midway? Yeah, of course. It's so fucked up. Uh, and it's just kind of like sad. You're like, <sighs> I think if you if you explain it in a way, audiences are receptive, but sometimes they're just like, now, I want show now. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, have you considered the fact I don't care and I just want the next episode? Yeah, you yeah know, which is a shitty thing to do, but it happens. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a lot of this can be offset a bit with better planning. I don't know. Like I don't know. I, I, I feel like a lot of this- uh, We're not I'm, part of the industry. We're just speculating at this yeah, point, this, you know? Yeah, like a lot of this I feel comes from like, you know, someone high up top being like, we, it would be nice to uh, get our show out in this schedule. Yeah. And then the people actually working on the show are like, this can't be done or yeah. this will be done very, very- This poorly. This, we would have to like kill mm. ourselves. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and then somehow they deliver it. And then the top people are like, we can do this again. Let's let's keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no so it's like, it's just like a kind of like a negative kind of feedback loop where nothing improves. Uh, yeah, as you said, that I think in order for anything to change at this point, you know, whether it be Western animation or the anime industry, like mm -hmm. there just needs to be a top down remodeling of mm -hmm. just how the system works so that it's fair for everyone. People don't complain as much, and we still get a good you know product at the end of the day. But hey, easier said than done. It's not going to happen anytime fucking soon, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it, it feels like kind of like a uh, bittersweet to talk about how good Jujutsu Kaisen 2 is just because yeah. we know of mm. the things going on behind the scenes, but still, you know, curious to see what the rest of the season is going to be like. We'll see how it goes. Do you, know, do you know what the most ironic case I've seen all year? Mm. Zom 100. <laughs> Oh yeah. Zone 100, the yeah, what show. Happened? It's on like, it was it's like- on permanent hiatus. Indefinite hiatus. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, it, only, it only got to episode nine or something. Yeah. I believe. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why which, is it on which, permanent hiatus? Which like, tell me the irony of a show showcasing- Production issues. Yeah, production it? issues. <laughs> Apparently a ton of the animators quit, right? Or something uh, like that. They're releasing the rest in December or something. I think it's- uh, Oh, they're releasing the rest in December. The rest is finishing by Christmas or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah, Jesus. But it's been on hiatus for quite a while now, right? Yeah, like yeah, a couple yeah. Of oh, yeah. Okay, I've said ten. Yeah. Okay, so okay, so it's not on. It's they just went, they just took a fucking fat hiatus. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which you oh, know, geez. which yeah. is like interesting because I don't think we've ever had like a mid-season I mean, hiatus this long before. You for know, any show? It, 80s, eighty-six. It, oh yeah, it's <laughs> it sucks to uh, see this, but hopefully, this will maybe like you know if if this kind of stuff happens. And if the audience kind of isn't receptive to it, and a lot of people don't watch the, because you know a, lo a lot of people are going to fall off because of this, because you know yeah. they're not going to mm -hmm. they're not going to wait around. Yeah, they're going to move yeah. on to the next thing. <laughs> Hopefully, that kind of feedback gets to the executives who are making these decisions, who are trying to rush things out. They're like, look, the last time we tried to rush this out, it fucking blew up in our faces. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's try and do this properly next time. Yeah, which is why it's great when we get like a production like Free Run, which is a fucking banger anime and mm. has had like- I mean, just watch it. It's so good. It's it's also- it's so I good. see a lot of porn of it. Is that, <laughs> why do I see that on Twitter? It's, I, I, I noticed this as well. I, I was gonna talk about this because I remember re I remember reading the uh, manga and hey, it was I like- I thought my Twitter feed was weird. <laughs> I haven't seen any of that shit. It was, it was- But I'm not surprised. The only, the only stuff I've seen of Free Run is porn. Really? <laughs> yeah. Which means that it's either like an amazing, uh, amazing show or a dog send shit show. links please. Okay, so so, so here's here's the weird thing, okay. So um as like a manga reader free run, I remember reading the manga, it's a very like touching emotional yeah. show, right? Yeah. And it's the, its characters are definitely not like let's say the fan service type. Okay, that's okay. Good. Like mm. a lot of like, I like that. yeah, you know, all of like basically all of the girls in there are, you know, they are very very I can't think of I can't even think of a scene where they are like even showing a lot of skin, are like a lot of clothes they wear, like cover all of their bodies. Mm. Can't really see their proportions. Well, it doesn't, the, the story and the vibe of the whole show doesn't really incite any of that and, kind of like mentality in any way. Yeah, the viewer, and the right? story of the vibe as well, because like it's they're a very, really fucking squeezing this shit it's, out. It's know? a very like emotional touching yeah. tale. Yeah. So what Free Ren has proved to me is that <laughs> 
it don't fucking matter about the vibe at all. If people want to loot someone, they're the internet are going to fucking do it. All it takes Whether- is one artist to be like, this is a wholesome <laughs> show, but that yeah. character's hot. Well, it's yeah. like, I, I didn't think the fish girl was hot in Zelda, but I saw a lot of porn of the fish girl. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> I thought she was hot. I'm sorry. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. But like, yeah, it is, it is kind of a weird phenomenon because we haven't really seen examples of similar vibe show. Like that's kind of like people, you know, looting Spice and Wolf, which, no one really did because this because well no, I mean I didn't see it because like it, and it's not, because it's def- such are a you sure someone about definitely that looted Spice and Wolf. I mean the okay. only one who looted Spice and Wolf was Hasekura himself from making Holo just naked for a lot of the that's, show. That's like, the thing. Do, do, do you know what's weird? Sometimes now I see if there is like a fan servicey show, yeah. I never see any like loot fan art of it, right? Mm. You know what I mean? Now it's just like the anti fan service shows. Those artists are like playing the reverse. Game yeah, 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 right yeah, now. yeah. They are, they are. Uh. And I feel like, I don't know. They're, they're <laughs> I, I feel like with Free Rent, there was this one scene in the latest episode where I, okay, there, there, there was like one, I think, horny bait scene, but it was mm. just like compared to other horny bait scenes, it was like very, very tame. Um, it was when Free Rent, like there was a shot where Free Rent had her feet just like showing. <laughs> <laughs> and the artists are like, yo, it's free real estate. Let's go. Show feet, show feet. <laughs> she showed her feet, let's go. <laughs> Let me see her feet. <laughs> Why do people like Fuck feet sake. so much? What's huh? the deal with feet? I don't get it. I wish I, wish I could understand. Isn't it the most common fetish though in the world or uh, something? I don't know. I think I remember seeing something that where it's like- bastard. Oh my God. <laughs> don't don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> I, I wish I got it. I wish I got it, but I, I just so I could understand the mind. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think I read somewhere that like feet fetishes are, yeah. I think feet fetishes oh. are the most common fetish. It's it's called so the technical term is called podophilia. Oh my lord! Which, they really they the, really the, shouldn't the, have. The, the, Why? Do they have? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm a podophile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a potter. Yeah, I can't imagine that one caught on with the, yeah. with the feet enjoyers. <laughs> <laughs> Naval fetishes, body piercings, <laughs> tattoos, gerontophilia, uh, underwear, hair, color. Oh, the intense sexual attraction that younger men and women feel for older men and women can qualify as a fetish. Oh, cradle snatching. All oh. right. Oh. oh. Okay. Cradle snatching. <laughs> <Cradle snack. laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feet is like the most common. Yeah, feet's the most common. I, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I'm personally not into it, but th- there could be worse things you're into. What counts as a fetish? Like, uh, what's what's anything that you get if like you get, sexual? If you get bricked up, yeah. If you get bricked up, so his boobs a fetish. Well, I think because it's no, like- no, that's just an instinct. But the, the, that's that's the thing, right? What, what counts as a fetish? A f- well, it's, I think, it's boobs, some, I think boobs and ass could technically be a fetish, yeah. but they're so commonplace that we wouldn't consider I think them a fetish. I think a fetish is something fetish unusual. Yeah, I yeah. think fetish is something where the 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 layman will look at it and be like, I don't really feel anything to, but then there'll be someone else to be like, Nah, that's hot. Gratification is strongly linked to a particular object or activity yeah. of a body. It needs to be part. something super specific. Other right? than a sexual yeah. other than the sexual organs. So does thighs count as a fetish? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's a that's a fetish. Uh, number two, an, in, in, an inanimate object worshipped for its supposed magic powers or because it's considered to be inhabited by a spirit. I've never heard of this definition what? No, of a I, fetish. I think I've, I've, I've read that being used in that sense. And really? I was very confused. Oh. Cause I was like, huh? <laughs> what? That's, that's weird. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't know why, I don't know why it is free rent that all the artists have chosen to, uh, I think we've I think we've kind of grown up in an age now where like when it comes to the Dojin community, at least from how I observe it, mm-hmm. as someone who's you know followed it for a long time, like when you look back to like the two thousands or like the twenty tens, right? It was <coughs> the obvious Dojin bait shows that would get the most Dojin, right? Yeah, where it's yeah. the shows that were either just straight up sexualizing the characters in the original story or ones that kind of alluded to sexualizing the characters but didn't necessarily go all the way through. Yeah. Now I feel people again have played the reverse game where it's like they look at the obvious looted stuff or the ones that allude to it and they go no but that's too obvious the show is already doing it for us (laughs) so let's take the ones where the show doesn't even hint at it at all and give people what 
they might possibly want that they can't get from the original show. And so I think that's why shows like Free Run now are getting more looted than other looter shows. Cause like we never saw any dojins of like read off healer because the show was already doing it for a lot of people, right? Like, but Free Run is also not- the characters are shit. Also the characters yeah. are shit, of course. <laughs> I, don't, but, I don't fucking feel anything. <laughs> yeah. suck. But yeah. you know, that doesn't stop the fact that there were a lot of people who watched that show and were like, well, you know, the show is already going mm. all the way through. So yeah. dojin artists were like, well, th there's no place for us. They've already already done it for us. Whereas Free Rain is like, they look innocent, but they are aesthetically pleasing characters where if we put them in lewd positions, a lot of people might like it. I don't know. That's just my observation as a Dojin uh, professional. I think it's the implication, you know? Yeah. It's it, because, I don't know. It's, it's weird because I- Does it ruin the show? <laughs> I don't think it does. This isn't a complaint. Uh, no. This is not a complaint at all. This is this is merely just an observation. See, I don't know because like I think I mentioned this in an earlier podcast episode, but like I can't read dojins of shows I really enjoy. Oh yeah, you did mention yeah. that. So like Monogatari you know, couldn't be me. Monogatari, <laughs> like any of the shows that I grew up with, I can't read dojins of it because it just ruins my perspective of the shows that I love so much. Rob Pokemon. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> Speaking of fetish, <laughs> is there something you're telling us? Where the fuck us? did that come from? <laughs> listen, listen. Are I, you a furry? I, no, no. I just wanted to see how you'd react. <laughs> <laughs> that, look, I, if you're into it, cool. But that ain't me. What about? I'm, I'm not into what it. What about Vaporeon? <laughs> did you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just curious. The God of War? No. Okay. No. Nah, nah. Love Bunny? No, no, no. Nah. Yeah. Um, Chancy. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an interesting one. Oh Where do you start? <laughs> oh, we're going to hell. Oh why, why are we talking about this? I don't know. I just thought it was fucking dumb, but I just thought about it. But, but see, like that's why like the Dojins I always enjoyed reading were the shows that I had no personal connection to or affiliation to from the original show. So like, yeah. I had no problems reading like or emo Dojins. <laughs> because I don't give a fuck about the original show or the original <laughs> so characters. So I don't saying, care what, what position they're putting. What you're saying is you- by Maybe you don't like the canonical breaks that the Dojin introduced That might be it, yeah. It kind of ruins the entire story. Yeah, I think okay. so. How do you go, have you guys ever read, I guess no. Dojins are kind of like fan fiction. I've never read. I mean, or, yeah. Or kind of like fan, kind of like stories yeah. that have nothing to do with, let's say, you know, like hentai or anything, sure. but just literally just like, let's say a fan story. Yeah. Do you enjoy those at all? Have you ever had a point where you're like, damn, the canon story didn't give me everything I wanted to. And uh, I, I kind of went into like the fan territory. No, because no. I'm like, cause I also understand that that was that particular manga artist or, you know, writer's decision to do so. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I might not be satisfied with it, but you know, at the end of the day, I can just move on to something else as well. You yeah. know, like I'm not, I don't think I've ever read a series where it's been, that I've been so heavily invested into where I'm like, I want to see the best ending for this. And this is the exact ending that I envision. And I hope the artist or writer delivers. And then it'd be something completely different. Usually like with those kinds of stories I get heavily invested into, I'm satisfied with the way it ends yeah. in some regard. Yeah. And if there are ones where like, I'm not satisfied with it, then I'm just kind of go, well, you know, it wasn't exactly what I'd hoped for, but, I, I still enjoy the ride and you know, I can just move on to something else. Can you Google the most famous fan stories? I'd, like, I'd love to know examples of like, what are some really popular fan stories? Well, it wasn't like, uh, wasn't, uh, what was it? Yeah. 50 Shades of Grey, right? 50 Shades of Grey. It was, yeah, a, yeah, was yeah. a Twilight, Twilight fanfic. Fans, fans, fan fiction. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I've done it twice. I've, I've, I- You've done it Wait, twice. Wait, what do you mean you've, you've done, done it? Done, what do you mean you've done it? Um, in As in you've written one? No, not written. Right? <laughs> okay, but I was about to say. Like I, I guess no, no, no. Like consumed, like some oh, fan, 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 some fan fiction out of some dissatisfaction to like a main like storyline. Well, which ones are there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, could you click the article? Ten successful books. That yeah. Oh yeah. Let's let's check these out first. Okay. So Fifty Shade. Yeah. Obviously. City of Bones. Love hypothesis. I don't know any of these. Uh, okay. I do not know any of these either. And go. Okay. Yeah, don't know that, don't know that. <laughs> I don't know any of these. Well, here's the thing. I don't think we're like the usual kind of like- I don't read. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, fair, yeah. that's fair. I, so, I mentioned like this book I was reading once on Trash Taste and I was nearly done with it. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had like, I had like, um, not, not, not like 40, 50 pages left in it. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I'll talk about it when I'm done. And I just never fucking finished it. <laughs> 
I, this is like was it the abroad in Japan book? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't started yet. <laughs> but I was like, man, I, I, I think I just don't enjoy reading as much as I, I wish I did. A manga I enjoy, but even then, I, I think yeah. I just too I, much. I, too I, much. I, I don't really enjoy reading that much. I wish yeah. I did. That's fair. I wish That's I wish fair. I did because I feel yeah. like. It's Why do you wish you did? Because it feels like such a, a vast, uh, a vast untapped source of knowledge, and mm. also like the world you can throw yourself into. Uh, so much more imaginative in novels and stories. And I yeah. wish I could kind of get into it, but sadly I can't. Fair. Yeah, like I was saying, you know, like I, there are two things that like stick out to my mind in terms of like fan fiction, mm. fan fictions, I guess. The first one, uh, I remember being, first time watching Evangelion, Mm. Being very, very dissatisfied with the ending. Right, the TV series <laughs> The ending. TV series yeah. ending. And the end of Ava with yeah. the ending as well. This is back in uh, my point where I like fucking hated Ava. Right. Uh, and I remember discovering this doujin, which I think is like the greatest doujin of all time mm. that I've ever read. It's called Retake. Okay. Where it's kind of like a reimagining of the Evangelion ending mm. that kind of like ties in all of, all of the plot points mm. uh, that's, cause, you know, if you've seen Ava, you know that there is a different appeal to the end of Evangelion than, let's say, tying up all the plot points. Because half the plot points just fucking, they forget about, you mm. know. Uh, but it gives, before, this was before like 4.0 came out. It gives you like, it gave you like, it gave me emotional closure for all of the characters, right. which the original series didn't do. And do you think that's why Arno made 4.0? <laughs> it's like, I see all, I see people are very dissatisfied with the ending. I'm going to make my own fan fiction of my own show. I don't think Arno gives a shit. 4.0. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like the entire rebuild was just his own fan fiction of it. Yeah, you know? pretty much. Pretty much. And I remember the second time I did this as well was the first time I'm reading Love Hina. <laughs> oh. Where you're like, but what if? What if? What if? What if other girls had like a nice happy ending? Yeah, uh, and that was the last time I, re I ever dipped my feet into the world of fan fictions. Okay, but to be fair, like there was one show, there was one manga series that I think did that in a really, really cool way. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was this manga called Book uh, Touch of Like we mm -hmm. can't study or we can't, yeah, or something yeah. like that. So they had a canonical like one of the girls like, you know, getting the bag and mm. you know, that was like the end of like that harem. Yeah, but yeah. then the author did a giga brain move and he released one more volume where he gave a canonical ending to every single love interest so that everybody would be satisfied. Nah, I he phoned cheating, it. Though. Nah, boss phoned it in. Boss man phoned it yeah, in. Yeah. Boss phoned it in, but That's he cheating. also gave everybody a satisfying ending mm. in, in one way or another. Yeah, and he was I like, you know what? On your I will not yeah. I will not let the Dojin <laughs> artist take the bag. I'm doing this myself, god nah, damn it. We, we, we need one winner in a harem anime or everyone's a winner, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah what is it? Fucking participation award? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Harem? Look, it didn't matter because my favorite girl won canonically, so I, I was satisfied <laughs> with it, but I was but like- you said all of them were canonical. Yeah. Well, technically they weren't. Oh, okay, 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 okay. He was just okay. like, this This was like a what if scenario of like, he picked the other girls. Like he basically visual noveled it essentially. That just sounds like copium. It's oh, it was absolutely copium, <laughs> but I would also be huffing that same copium if I was him as well. You know, being like, like, I can't believe you didn't pick this girl. I, I feel like I would be less invested in harem anime if I knew every girl was uh, going to have a happy ending. You know, mm. I, I feel like yeah. to me, the appeal of harem anime is knowing that one of these girls is it's going like a, to win. Like a football team. You pick a, yeah, football, yeah, yeah. You pick a size. Yeah, harem anime is just like sports anime in disguise. Yeah, like it's It's, it's yeah. the closest that anime fans come to being toxic uh, sports fans. Yeah, basically. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. You know? That's why- uh, that's But why at I the like same it. time, you're also calling out every fanfic writer as well in that sense then. Fan, I, I will happily say that I was in copium mode when yeah. I was just like, I just want to see different. <laughs> I, I, I just like, give me a crumb. Give me a crumb of cope right now. Because I, I, I do not God have just being like, I just want to see Oscar happy. That's all I care <laughs> about. And I don't care if I have to search through the deep crevice of Why fanfiction.net to find that shit. Why the fuck did you have to call me out? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I know, I know you all, John. I know you all. I did not oh, need no, to be called God. out like that. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining this episode of Trash Taste. We're gonna hey, end it there. Hey, don't forget, uh, we got some brand new Get merch right merch. here that we're showing off right now. It's fucking sexy. Link is in the description below. It's available for a very limited time. So make Woo. sure to grab a look at that illustration. Look at that. Sure. Look Shirts, at that. button ups, long sleeves. We got everything. Make the sure Quality, yeah, insane. And I'm not kidding. Link is on the screen right now. Also, look at all these patrons, though. Ooh, wonderful patrons. Wonderful, 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 wonderful people. Hey, let us know what your favorite fan fiction is. <laughs>
<laughs> and your favorite <laughs> fetish, if you have one. Whatever you want, I guess. Uh, we don't get we opening up that bag of worms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, please, been, uh, please don't boys. mistype Pluto uh, figure. Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah. No, no, please yeah, don't. don't, don't. That, that'll be the most. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't write that down. <laughs> but uh, hey, if you'd like to support us, go over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash trash taste. Also, follow us on Twitter, send us some memes on the subreddit. And if you hate our face, listen to us on Spotify. And we will see you guys all next week. Tell me wow. of also if you didn't know that James Cameron was making an avatar <laughs> live action. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be everyone. Yeah. All right. All right. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye.